Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, brand new podcast. Hey, wait a minute. It's my podcast. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I forgot. Enjoy. Now, where's my camera? Oh, here. Right? Is that one mine? There's one right here. Okay, here we go. Look how cool I look. My cool mom outfit. You look really cool. I like that mm -hmm. color on you. I'm trying. Thanks, Royal's man. good. I don't really, I started to wear color again. Like I went through a heavy black phase mm -hmm. after I had my second kid. I you go did? through waves. Are we recording now? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, we started. <laughs> I like to just start. Um, thank you so much for coming over. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thanks for having me. Look how sexy Leanne Kreischer is. I was super young. That's oh. when I was modeling. I was in, in New York. I was a petite model. Yes, you uh, still are a petite shit. model. I am still petite. I don't know about <laughs> model. I definitely don't have the body I had back then. I was a swimsuit model. And wow. now I'm like, I'm like, uh, I induce vomiting in a swimsuit. <laughs> I put it on and people go, oh yeah. my God. Me too. And isn't that hard as now? Because I've had my, I just had my second kid 10 months ago. And I'm like, how do I, how do I wear a bathing suit? Like, I don't want to. Like ethically. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> right. How do I ethically go out in public? <laughs> yeah. Like, cause I, I don't give it like, I'll, I might rock a bikini, but I'm not gonna, no. I don't know what to wear, but I don't want to also shut it down totally. It's depressing, I have yeah. to say. So I I ha I can't ethically wear a bikini either. <laughs> and I can't ethically wear anything like backless. Mm. Like my back is my least flattering part, is the fattest part of my body, is my back. Back fat? Yeah, I guess bad. Yeah. So it kind of limits me. And <laughs> I, I'm I find myself shopping at Land's Inn. Is what is that? I've heard of this. It's a mail order catalog for 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 people who live on the East Coast and are mm -hmm. really conservative. Okay. So um, everything like starts at like my <laughs> shoulder blades, which is what I need. And then I put it on and go, oh, my God, I look like 50 years old. Wait, I am 50 <laughs> years old. Wait, I don't want to look 50 years old. Are you 50? I'll be fit. No, I'll be 49 this year, but I'm close. God damn it. It I, is depressing, though. I, it is kind of and kind of. OK, we'll put it this way. When I when I met you and Bert. Mm -hmm. You were the first grown up couple Tom and I had become friends with. Like I, we didn't have friends that had children. And right. so I we kind of grew up. I grew up watching you and Bert be adults. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, he must have had to rethink a lot. <laughs> Hold on. That's how you don't do that. Let's maybe wait and do that differently. Is that what you did? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But I remember I remember when you turned 40 and I thought to myself like, oh, wow, like that's you're such a lady. Like you're so Huge. beautiful and you had like a pretty dress on for your 40th. And I don't know. I thought you guys were so cool. Oh, that's you made it sweet. You made it cool. Well, I still feel 28. I say yeah. that all the time. I do not even remotely feel my age, yeah. which I think is good because I don't want to be, you know, what I think a 50 year old would be. But 50, but you don't look 50. Do you? Okay. Tell me what it feels like because I'm preparing myself for 50. I'm 42. Yeah. That's my next big decade. Right. Well, I'm not there yet, but I can tell you this, what the doctor said is true, which sucks. Like from 45 on, things start changing like Ugh. rapidly and out of your control. Like eating the same exact, exact diet, same exact diet, gain 10 pounds. Uh. Um, like parts of my face are starting to drop <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about it. I'm, I'm like, all of a sudden... My chin is going from like parallel to the ground to like 45 degree <laughs> angle. And pretty soon it's going to be like 90. Yeah. And there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, and I'm not going to have surgery. No. It's... I'm not plumping a bunch of shit in my face. No. And, and that sucks. And the, my doctor is so great because she, she'll say, here's what's about to happen this decade. You're going to gain 10 pounds. Ooh, it's no. just going to happen sometime in this decade. So if I were you, I'd start working out. In a way that you can like continue to work out on into your 60s. So like if it's yeah. power walking or hiking, start that now. And I was like, really? Start it now? But she was fucking right. Mm. And I'm not happy about that. But the other part of it is I know myself even better. Like I thought I knew myself really well in my 40s. I know myself even better now. Yeah. And I'm way more comfortable with myself than I was in my early 40s. And I thought I was pretty comfortable then. Right. Um, and when things come at me, I handle them so much better. I don't know. Yeah, there's a level of not giving a fuckery that kind of like, set, by the time you're 40, you're like, double bird, bro. I'm over it. Been there, done that. Yeah. Don't fuck with me. Totally. But I imagine by 50, we're going to be like... <laughs> Triple fuck you. Hilarious. <laughs> right? I'm stressed out. What? Yeah. I know my only fear now after having two kids is like, 
what if I die before they're raised? That's my existential fear. I have this horrible panic like, oh my God, I can't die before my kids are grown. I know what you mean. We felt that when they were little. Yeah. I I mean, I still feel that. You're like, who cares? Nobody wants to die. (laughs) Wouldn't leave your kids un finished unraised yeah. or whatever yeah and then my husband's gonna find some dalmatian wife a second wife <laughs> dalmatian wife some dumb dumb who does pilates all day right, right? and right. the lululemon pants right and she's like 25 and she's like oh my god your kids are great and, and finally like, you appreciates know? the designer bags that your husband wants to purchase for you but you reject because it's too much fucking money because you were poor together you mean that you yeah. mean that yeah, yeah that yeah why do our husbands want to spend so much money what's I don't that know. about i don't know I don't know. I don't know if it's a celebration of their own success. Yeah. Uh, I hope that's what it is because I never fancy myself a trophy wife that needs a bunch of bling bling. I don't. I don't like it either. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, me too. Um, However, there's some things that he has gotten me that now I like. I'm okay. I I could do like a nice one nice handbag. I can do one nice watch. Yeah. But then um, there's a point where it becomes repetitive and not special. And it's like eating too much. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one slice of pizza, that's pretty fun. Two is great. Three, it's not You're too much. Too yeah. much. I it's agree not even with you. Fun. Yeah, it's not even fun anymore. You're no, right. <laughs> but I yeah, it's, I guess it is the kind of thing. Like I I made it, and this is what I'm gonna spend my money on. And we celebrate, right? Yeah. This is how, because you yeah. were with him the whole way. The whole the broke. whole way broke. Oh, Isn't that crazy? So broke, right? <laughs> so broke. I've told this story so many times. Bert, one time, very cavalierly, my little country club raised boy, man boy, uh, yeah. came in one day and was <laughs> like, give me 50 bucks. And I went, I don't got it. And he was like, yeah, but you can go get it, right? I was like, no, we don't have it. He's like, yeah, but I, I'm going to gamble with it. So I'm definitely going to come back with more than 50 bucks. And I went, dude, I don't have it. It's not in a bank account. It's not in a wallet. It's not under a rock somewhere. I don't have $50. <laughs> And it was one of those times where I saw the look on his face like, wait, we really don't have $50? Yeah. That's a possibility that you could not have money. Yeah. <laughs> How did you guys, it's so funny because you guys are so seemingly opposite. And we are. I think everybody on the on the outside can see what the differences are. But what are the similarities between you and Bert? Like, obviously, it's, it's, it works. So yeah. what, what is the glue that holds you guys together? Well, it's so funny you asked that. Um, the guy Jair that came and did our like behavioral analyst stuff, uh, we have almost the exact same value system. What do you mean? Did your behavioral analyst? Stuff? Oh, he was awesome. I want to do this. I love. Oh, this you guy. should listen to this. It's podcast okay. number like two sixty two of the okay. Birdcast. This guy just reached out to me via email and said, uh, "I'm a behavioral analyst. <laughs> I give like online tests and then I analyze them and I do this for all different kinds of people." Um, uh, high schoolers going to college, people in corporate uh, corporate environments. To it kind of helps you figure out your personality and how mm. you function and how you like your value system and your personality. <clears throat> we did discover I'm 98 percent other focused, and Bird is 98 percent self focused. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hence no the good shit. match, right? So, no and I was shit. like, that might be a problem for yeah, me. Yeah. It may not be a problem for Bert, but that might be a problem for me. You like Let's adore adjust. it. You like taking care of people, and he likes being taken care of. What it's a fucking shocker. perfect fit. Yeah. But in that thing, it, it kind of laid out like what your <laughs> values were, and I don't remember what the answers were in that test. Yeah, but our values were the same. And he said, people who are completely different in personality, he's found in this test, if they have the same value system, they'll stay married forever. No it's people who don't have the same value system that have marital problems oh. because it all kind of boils down to how do you raise your kids? How do you how do you treat each other as human beings? How do yeah. you think about other people inherently? You know, he, he wants everybody to be successful. I want everybody to be successful. He wants everybody to be happy. So do I. Like those kind of basic values. Yes. Uh, I would never cheat on him. Yes. I don't think he would ever cheat on me. No. That, that's a value. It's part of the value system. So I think that's part of why it works. And we're always really honest with each other. Um Cause I just don't believe in not being honest. So, like, tell me what's the level? Like, how brutally honest are you? Is it is it down to? Well, I have to read him. You know, hmm. it depends on how where he is. Because sometimes he can't hear it, mm-hmm. and I have to I have to wait till he can hear it. And like, what? Okay, like, what will you break it down? Like, 
give me an example of something you'll be brutally honest about. Is it is it something like you left the toilet seat up again? I mean, that's like oh, I do that shit, yeah. But yeah. that that's a that's like a that's what I call like noise. You, <laughs> that's like noise in the house. Yeah, his habits like that, I hate. Yeah. He has so many of them. Yeah, he's that, so gross. Oh my god, what? he's yeah. so gross. Yeah. It's like living with a frat boy, and I sometimes. I, I judge myself for accepting it because I go, you know what? He must be a really good guy because I don't know that I would accept this from anybody on the fucking planet. You're like, he must be. He it must sounds be. sounds like you're convincing yourself. Deduced myself. He, he is. Deduced. He, he is, is a really great human but being. But he's, he's disgusting from disgusting what him. I've heard. Now, I haven't seen all of these habits, but I remember the one where he would cut his nails mm-hmm. and then tape them yeah. to the bottom of the coffee table. Correct. Is that still happening? No. Does okay. we don't have a coffee table? Okay, I've eliminated so, <laughs> that. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that anymore. And boogers, a lot of like booger rolling in the. A lot of in, booger rolling happens. Yeah. Um, yes, and he does clean his ears out with the Q-tips and put them on the door jam, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is so much easier than the garbage, right? Today, this morning, I went to the bathroom, and he had drank like a beet juice, and sit the empty container down on the floor and the garbage can is on the floor on the other side and i'm like why don't you just put it in the garbage oh it's right there right there in the garbage and i guarantee you that thing would have sat there yeah. until it rotted yeah until it had completely disintegrated if i hadn't picked it up and moved it but some of that i just have to go it's just that's just noise i just gotta because the truth of the matter is He's gone most of the time. And right. our relationship is based on something other than that. The now, day-to-dayness. He, exactly. Crap. The day-to-dayness after he's here for two or three weeks starts really getting to me. Yeah. But am I really going to not love somebody because of that? I mean, some people would say, yeah. Oh, I had a boyfriend who I think that was the final straw is was how it? disgusting I am. Oh, You yeah. are? Well, not like that. First of all, I have a two-parter. Remind me to go back to what I want to ask you about, Bert. Please remind me. Okay. Secondly, yes, I'm I'm messy. I'm not disgusting like Bert, yeah. but I don't care if things aren't folded. I don't care if there's dishes in the sink. I don't care if I throw laundry on the floor. Like, I'm not a meticulously clean person, and he was. Like, he would fold his sh- shirts with, like, a folding board, oh, and God. he had everything super... Oh, he was anal. Yeah, so yeah. he really did not appreciate my level of dirt. Now, Tom and I are equally messy i'd say he's a little he's a pack rat that's mm. what but let me ask you this okay why do you think bert is inclined to clean his ears so i'm assuming they're disgusting the q-tips covered in wax yeah and it's like probably bright orange yeah or whatever. it is bright orange yeah and he has no shame over the the messy q-tip and then instead of putting it in the trash to conceal it he puts it on the door why i'll why tell did, you I, yeah. I asked him why yeah. is what he said it makes him very unnerved to not see evidence of himself everywhere. <laughs> so when I say, what? your shit is everywhere. What? That's what he told me. He said, if, if I can't see evidence of me in this house, it makes me really nervous. I start panicking. Okay. So is that a precursor to like a hoarder? <laughs> I'm a little, he is a little hoardy. So is Tom. But I'm a little like fucking get rid of it. I'm the exact same, yeah. I'm like, you had look this. Purge, purge, purge. Do you want this? Bye. No, you don't Bye. need this. Yeah. 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 And Tommy's the same way. I'll be like, can we, you have five of the same zip up hoodie. Can I throw out like, can I donate, sorry, like four of these? Five? Yeah. Five. You know how many hoodies we had? Yeah. I counted them. I counted them this weekend because yeah. I was so fucking mad. Yeah. I had to do something with my energy. He has 57 hoodies. Who needs 57? 57. And how many are you wearing? And, he brought and he, four home from Europe. I'm like, this was two weeks ago. Wait, why were you so mad? What were you mad about? Because because he had not, um, because I was angry. Here's what really the root is. I was angry because I didn't build a his and hers closet when we redid this house. Because I share my closet with that motherfucker. And I did this to myself because I went, you know what? I'm going to put him on the easy side. I'm going to put him on the easy side. I have to walk around the door to get to my side. Wow. Right? So I open the door goes and I go around the door to get to my side of the closet and I thought to myself that would be good because I'll keep my side nice and tidy and he'll keep his side nice and tidy because we have so much room oh my god Mm -hmm. I can't even use our full length mirror because Mm -hmm. I can't stand in front of it because there's so much shit on the floor Mm -hmm. and when I ask him to clean up his side of the closet Mm -hmm. he's like this is what he said last time I asked him he goes why would I do that I'm leaving for like three weeks 
And I went, because mm. I use that closet too. And I have to walk over your shit to get to my shit. And so really I was mad because I didn't build a his and hers closet, but I was like. You're mad. You're saying, well, here's what you're saying, that you were mad at yourself. Yes. Because you didn't. Kind anticipate of, well you know what it is is you didn't take care of your needs first exactly and your needs would have been let him be a pig you yeah. know you know Bert's never going to be neat no but for some reason you thought i'm not going to take care of myself i'm going to i'm going to have faith that he's going to change right or maybe he'll ad- or maybe right. he'll adapt well right well, what i th- damn it i actually didn't even think about it at all I, I what i thought was he and i were sharing the tiniest tiniest closet Mm. And this closet is literally like four times bigger than the closet we had before. And I really, I think I thought, there's no way we're going to fill this up. And you do. And he did. And everything just goes everywhere. Yeah, Tom Um, and I, we share a closet as well. We had ours redone. And uh, of course, his shit is like, he comes home. And I get it because I've done it myself. You come home off the road, suitcase, bam, open. It's everywhere. Your shit's in chaos when you're on the road. I get it. But same thing, Tommy. There's 50 hoodies. Yeah. He's like a Melda Marcos with the shoe collection. Yeah, yeah, and there's same. 500 of the same fucking Adidas everywhere. Yeah. And it's all spilling onto to my side. And he comes home and he goes, we need, to, we need a bigger closet. We need to build. And I go, <laughs> I go, babe, if that isn't the worst thinking. <laughs> right. I go, no, no, you need to pare down what you own. You're because right. truly, how much of that shit do you wear? I wear probably like five things. Me too. Really? Yeah, me too. And then... <laughs> Yeah, like just wear five things yeah. and then give the rest away, or yeah, or when you buy something, replace you know, take the old thing out. Exactly. They oh. don't get my husband does not get that theory at all. No, no, they collect. It's a, it's unnerving. Is that what is that the hardest part about living with Tom? With Tom, yeah, he's actually really easy. He's here's uh, I was thinking about our dynamic and the reason it works. Maybe it's because we are comedians, both of us, and I uh, we understand each other's brains. Mm-hmm. But we both operate, this is what his therapist told him, that he operates within a narrow emotional bandwidth. Okay. Um, And so do I. Now, Interesting. Yeah. What that means is, you ever watch Downton Abbey? Uh Uh-huh. We fucking loved. Amen. Yeah. Watched every show, every minute of every (laughs) episode. I'm watching it over again with Georgia because she was too young when it came out. Yeah. It's so good. And my therapist goes, well, you realize... Not a, not a lot of big things happen on Downton Abbey. I'm, I'm I'm saying yes. There's you know the weird murder plot line bubble. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know the the big story could be like oh, he didn't wear his tuxedo to dinner tonight. I know. You know? Heavens, heavens, <laughs> heavens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lady Mary doesn't have her gloves on for the ride. And oh my. Like, yeah, and, and it's because it's a narrow emotional show. There's really not a lot of drama there. It's not like Game of Thrones where someone's head's exploding and Right. And there's not a lot of real real drama. And I think that like I like that about Tom, right? Like we operate well together because we don't fire each other up a whole lot. Like we're really considerate of each other. But then that could be our downfall too, right? You think so? Sometimes. How could that be your downfall? Well, not downfall like ultimate no, yeah, yeah. like demise. But I think um because then there are times where like Ooh, like I I don't like operating in a narrow emotional bandwidth. That's why I go to therapy and I, you know, work on it and stuff. And I try to I want to try to have a closer relationship like to friends and people mm-hmm. and it's really hard for me. Why is it hard? Oh, because I don't uh because I'm a crazy mom, alcoholic dad, only child. Like, you know, I'm a comedian. I'm 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 doing this shit for a living for a reason. Yeah, yeah. So, but is it yeah. about trust? Do you think? Yeah, it's about I have trust. a hard time being vulnerable yeah. with people, yeah. and but that's why Tom and I work mm-hmm. so well because mm-hmm. we're both like, hmm, is that enough? Yes, like uh, it makes me <laughs> uncomfortable to have like truly emotionally charged um, exchanges to get too close. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's you don't like Ooh, it. No, it makes me uncomfortable. Doesn't it make? Does it make you weird? Like, I don't like when people play the acoustic guitar and sing to me. <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. It's too intimate. Yeah. Yeah. Or like slam poetry or a poetry reading. Like, oh, it, it makes my skin crawl. How funny. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about that. I like, Ugh. I, um, I like cl- close friendship and close Ugh. relationships. And, and I also like, 
at arm's length stuff. Yeah. But I, I do have a hard time faking stuff. I can't. Yeah. People know my disdain. Right. My husband. Does, yeah. He always points that out. Yeah. He's I like, can't. Can you at least hide it. that you hate that person? I'm like, I can't. I can't. Bert does, says that to me, too. He's <laughs> like, could you just change your face for five seconds, please? Because there's no way that she thinks that you like her. And I'm like, well, I don't fucking like her. What am I supposed to do? Go, oh, yeah, you're so nice. I'm never talking to you again, but you're so nice. I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. I can't. That's either. what I grew up with. Show you one thing, yeah. behave something else. I can't do that. Well, you grew up that way, uh, meaning in your in your home, like your yeah, mom, mom yeah. is that way. And yeah. then in the South, I think, too, oh, there's I'm a lot sure, of yeah. Southern politeness oh, where, bless her heart, is code for fuck that bitch, right? For, in some circles, yes. Yeah. I was lucky, and my dad was so Appalachia- they had less of that grace. Appalachia, what does that mean that he's more Appalachia? What does that mean? Well, it's Appalachian, like hi hillbilly is oh, actually oh. like a culture, gotcha. you know, yep. kind of like, I guess, like being Jamaican or something. Gotcha. It's a very specific kind of behaviors and beliefs and it's a culture, really. And they were less about <clears throat> appearances. Yeah, totes, bro. Um, less about, you know, putting on a good airs uh, yeah. and give a shit about that yeah it's you euro know. trash that's what i am yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's why we love each other because <laughs> yeah. we're trashy yeah yeah trashy. exactly that's right well there's so much truth in trash yeah because then they don't have to there's no highfalutin putting on airs nobody wore shoes in my hometown <laughs> i mean why would you ever even you can't even compare uh, shoes they don't right. have them right so. well that's that's poverty culture because hung i mean hung Hungary, too, was very poor during communism and stuff, too. Yeah. I think that lends itself to real. Yeah, it does. My hometown is like, I, I read a statistic. Isla had to research my hometown. She had to choose a place yeah. one of her parents were from, so she <laughs> chose to research my hometown. And the statistic I read was really alarming. I guess it's like 80% below the poverty line of the population. Fuck. It's like 80% or something like that. Like, I didn't know it was that poor but when you are there you don't really really realize that you know what i mean of course because you're just like you everybody else up. i know everybody's driving a 12 year old truck with two hundred fifty thousand miles on it that's normal you know yeah whereas here we're like three years ding ding gotta get a oh, new car <laughs> i think that is too i think that's one thing you and i have in common with our husbands as well is that the economic differences growing up like I didn't grow up poor, 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 Appalachian poor, but I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. My parents divorced. We were immigrant. And I lived in like a condo, not condo, sorry, like apartment communities. Mm -hmm. There were mostly immigrants and single moms. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, there's like the Armenian family down the, the way in the apartment complex. And But our husbands grew up like country club. White collar. Yeah. Really white collar. It's a totally different. I had did a podcast about this because yeah. it is a completely different a uh, set of values. Oh, yeah. A, a completely different point of view about the world and other people. And there's value in both of them. Yes. Um, but it is interesting to transcend, to go from one to the other is difficult. You know, yeah. to go, to step into the white collar world I married into, um, I was lost about a lot of stuff. Me I, too. I, I was totally lost, right? Yeah. I just read this book you might enjoy. It's called uh, Hillbilly Elegy. Uh -huh. I've brought it up 80 million times. But um, I learned so much about that. This huh. guy grew up in uh, in Appalachia, but in Kentucky. And then he ended up going to Harvard and to Yale, a wow. law school. And he was such a fish out of water. He articulated how I felt going from... Appalachian, Georgia, into New York City, mm. and then going from there into L.A. Like, there are things that white color people know that we don't even know to know. A hundred percent. Or know to ask about. A hundred percent. My dad was a forklift mechanic. He had his own business. He was a very successful businessman. Yeah. But my dad wore coveralls and, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we we're blue collar, yes. Yeah. And I, an immigrant on top of that. Right. And so I always tell Tommy, I'm like, you taught me how to think like American white guy, if that makes sense. It like, absolutely does. Yeah, because like little stuff. For instance, I remember like if my if I blew out a tire, I'd be like, oh, well, I 
you know, my dad knows the Lithuanian guy down the street and he's got a deal where it's a used tire. It's $25 off because there's just one hole in it. So it's not that bad of a thing. And then no, pass right? that hole. Yeah. <laughs> put a new tread on it. I'm yeah. the same way. Bert yeah. taught me the same thing. I know yeah. what you're going to say. And, and he said what? Well, go, why don't you just go down to the good year and I'll buy you a new one. It's $100. And now this thing's going to work for the next four years. Right. Yeah. Something similar. Like just why don't you just go down to the Jiffy Lube and be normal about stuff. Yeah. I had the same yeah. problem. I always had to find the angle of how yes. to get it cheap and how to get it like, what's, how can I work this system so I yeah. can get it somewhere cheap or free would be better. Yeah. And Bert, and when we would buy, like the first time we bought a television, we were still really poor. Yeah. And I was like, we're not buying the top television. He was like, oh, you buy the top of everything for stuff like that yeah. what? because it lasts longer. And I go, that's not true. That's absolutely not true. And he goes, no, actually it is true. It is kind of true. And I'll be damned if he didn't prove me wrong because we would buy stuff that would last forever and we'd pay top dollar for it. And I was like, okay, maybe maybe there is something valid instead of, hey, this fell off the back of a truck <laughs> behind the Walmart. Yeah, know, would you I like know. to pay $25 for it? It's just cracked on one side. I know. <laughs> I know. But I think, too, it goes deeper than material stuff in that – because I've kind of, uh, you know, I work around men, right? You know, um, and I watched, I've watched the men, I've watched the boys in the last 15 years as a stand up. And what I learned from them is to be shameless about your, your me needs. How, mm -hmm. you know, how Bert is, and my husband too, very comfortable with doing what's right for them first. If yeah. It ain't right for me. I ain't fucking doing it. And that's in business. I'm not talking about family. That's different. Right, right. Um, and secondly, Men and boys in general, I don't know how or why, maybe, I don't know, socioeconomic or my upbringing, but they have such a wonderful sense of entitlement. Yeah. A wonderful, and not a negative sense, a sense of of like, especially male comedians, it's fa it's fabulous. Because I would, and some female comedians, there are some women who inherently had this thing of, uh-uh, I deserve to be up there too, and I deserve to take up space, and you will listen to what I have to say. It's right. very powerful right. to assume your power. Mm -hmm. And I watched that sense of entitlement is in part socioeconomic, is in part of yeah. growing up in the country club world mm -hmm. of like, well, why wouldn't I just buy the best television? Yeah, right. What, are you crazy? Like, yeah. Well, why wouldn't I have the best, and why wouldn't I insist on the best for myself? Right. And I had to learn that, and that is poverty consciousness thinking. It is. That comes from growing up like, I'm just a dirty immigrant. I'm just going to give, you know, whatever, scraps. You get what I'm you get. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I still am learning that. Oh, yeah. I still am learning that. One. That's one of the things that I haven't learned. <gasps> I've learned a lot of other awesome things, <laughs> but that's one of them I still struggle with. Like, you yeah. know, I won this bag. Did I tell you the story about this no. bag I won? Oh, my God. I won this, like, $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag at a raffle. What? I did, and it was amazing, that's and I did a whole awesome. podcast about it because I loved it so much, but I would never, ever buy that bag. $5,000? I've never bananas. buy that bag. So the minute I got home with that bag, I texted all my local friends who I might run into it <laughs> to tell them that I won this bag <laughs> so that no one would think that I had purchased the bag. Just so everybody knows, I'm still... The silly girl from Bowden, Georgia, yeah. and I did not purchase this insane bag, but I will be wearing it every day for the rest of my right. life <laughs> because it's kind of a great bag. But I, I don't. I, that is definitely something I don't do for myself enough. But what if you had bought the five thousand dollars? I would bag? never have bought that bag. What if you did? What but if I you would. Get, never. Let, let's say this, Leah. Okay. Let's say it's your fiftieth birthday. Mm -hmm. Fifty. You made it. Mm -hmm. You've got two beautiful girls <laughs> who are successful and healthy and happy. Your life turned out great. Motherfucker, you did it. You fucking did it. Right. Now for your 50th birthday, yeah. the one thing you've always wanted was a Louis Vuitton bag, but it's $5,000. No. Would you do it? No. What? No. Nope. Why? You've earned it. I would not do that because Why? that's just too much money to spend. Too much money to spend on something like a bag. But it's not just that. It's, it's your 50th. It's once yeah, in a lifetime. I know, but that's, that's, the part, that's the part I still haven't learned. Right. Like we can afford that bag. 100%, yeah. No problem could afford it. I had I have like an ethical problem with paying that much for a purse. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's my that's I guess part of my poverty thinking. But I have no problem walking around with it. 
<laughs> see, so because it thing. was free. You, yeah, <laughs> well, see, it wasn't free, but it was. But you want it. I want so it. it was a fluke thing. Yeah. And as long as it's not you doing exactly. the action, you have no responsibility. That's right. Then you can enjoy the thing. Then I can enjoy it. Sort of. <laughs> I still go. I still tell everybody, you know, I won this bag in a raffle. I think I still have a hard time. Yeah. You know, part of my culture growing up was anybody that had money was bad. Absolutely. Bad. Ab- and can I tell you right. something? I had that same. I, ha- I, I had that. In you me. did? Absolutely. Yeah. I thought that rich people were assholes. Yeah. Because you got to either lie, cheat and steal to get ahead exactly. in this world. Yeah. And you must be a POS if you're if you're rich. Totally self-centered. Jerks. Yeah. Only out for yourself. Yeah. Don't care about your community. Don't care about your neighbor. <laughs> you just want that dollar dollar bill. And right. I was like, I'm never going to be that person. And then you, you know, start getting successful. And part of me, I think, struggled with spending money, you know, and, and looking, way, looking to whatever. I still do. Yeah. I think it's lame. And there's also things I just think are unethical. I agree with you that a $5,000 handbag is just impractical. Yeah. For me, it, it, here's a deal, though. If it brought me joy. Yeah. If, if I was like, you know what my thing is? Handbags. Right. I goddamn love them. I <laughs> sleep with them. I dream about them. <laughs> I love them. It brings me so much joy. Then right. I say, if you can afford it, Go ahead, knock yourself out. Yeah, if you can but if it, it doesn't really, if it's not your jam, yeah, if it doesn't make your your dick hard, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, then yeah. Don't but don't spend the money. If it's just yeah. a status symbol yeah. of like, look at me, look how I can afford that. Yeah, that's no, different I too. That. I think too. Now, if you said that you're fifty and you got five thousand dollars that you ha- you're gonna you've decided you're gonna spend five thousand dollars on yourself, I'd take a trip. Me too. I'd go somewhere. Yeah, in a heartbeat. I think experiences are worth every penny best right well because when you're on your deathbed i always think about this when i'm on my deathbed am i gonna be like i'm so happy i own all those handbags (laughs) you know what i love i need more shoes oh damn Uh, it i should have got that one more sale yeah (laughs) just one more yeah no you're gonna be like at that time where the kids and i and the husband we all spent time in tahiti and yeah we had this experience. I mean, at least I, I don't know, maybe some bitch on her deathbed is like, I'm so glad I have 50 Louboutins. And- <laughs> I can pass them on to my yeah. kids. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'll just hand them down. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather experience life in some way. Me too. Now, but my mom, I also have a weird relationship with money because my mom married my stepdad for money. Like she put an ad in the Indian newspaper to find a rich husband. Did she really? Uh-huh. And did it say looking for rich husband? <sighs> Shut up. Well, it said... Buxom European blonde woman seeks educated, wealthy Indian man for marriage. So it was basically like an an exchange. Like I've got these nice tits and you've got this Mercedes and let's go. And I went and she met the guy and a month later they were married and he was, he had a lot of money. And I, and she did, she did all the flash. She wow. got the Mercedes. She took it down to her gym just to show all those bitches like, hey, what's up? You know? Oh, my God. And she bought all these garish furs and all the jewelry and all the stuff. And I think part of me goes, well, if I like that stuff, then I must be like my mom. And my mom was kind of a shit dick. So I don't want to be like my mom. Um, so that took a while, too, to get over. Like, yeah, I had I'm to suss that out, too. Yeah. Because was your mom into materialism? Was she? She was. She. Well, yeah, she oh, was. Sorry, is. She's is. Still, I don't know. Dead I, to you. I, just not Yeah, dead. I don't know. I don't know her now. But last I knew her. Yeah, she was still. Now, she's also really cheap. And um, only one of her six husbands had money. No, but she six did. Husbands. Get, yeah, she's divorced her sixth now because she's fancy. <laughs> But none of them had money. One of them had money, but but she didn't get any money out of that divorce for certain reasons um, that I don't feel I should discuss. Sure. But um, but yeah, she's never had the money to do that. If she right. had married someone who had a lot of money, she totally would have been that way. Wow. Um, she was very much about her physical appearance. Yeah. Always had to be like beautiful from the time she woke up. Um. But I had trouble getting over like sexuality stuff oh, because she was so hypersexual. Mine too. That I, if I was a sexy person, Ugh. then I'm definitely exactly like my mother, which is not true. Right. But that's the things you have to kind of suss out, right? You have to figure out what is true and what is not true about 
who you are relative to them. Mm. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Fuck, dude. So much work being in, in our heads. Well, in my head. But your mom was your mom was schizophrenic, right? Yeah, she was borderline personality disorder, and oh. then later became oh, schizophrenic. So same, oh, same, same, same. It was so much. It was so a lot. I, <laughs> what do you think? What do you have left us to, to get through with that? <sighs> I mean, not that you're ever really over. Oh. Any of it. It's a constant. I struggle with like normal people stuff. Normal like people what? stuff. What do you mean? I have anxiety over things. I feel like most people don't. Um. Let me think about it. I've, I struggle. Here's one I struggle with: perfectionism with my children. Am I being a perfect enough mom? That's oh, one I yeah. struggle with a lot. That's interesting mm-hmm. because I was at. I wrote uh, some things I wanted to ask. Yeah, about. let's do it. But um, one of them was: How do you feel like neither you nor I had a roadmap for parenting? That's yeah, the worst. So when you started parenting, what? Will, uh, how did? How, how did that affect you? Yeah, you know, like when you started, you go, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, and I don't have anybody to ask. Actually, <sighs> how does that affect you? It's horrible. I, I think I had like a PTSD response to having my first kid. Yeah, because I was like a huge. I had a what's that called? Postpartum depression, yeah. and um, like I didn't know what what had happened. I was convinced my life was over, and this is the worst decision. You know, I don't know how to parent. I loved my kid, obviously. Yeah. And I am madly in love with my children and my husband, but I was like, I don't, I don't know. Just panic. Yeah. It's panic. You don't trust yourself, and you don't trust y- anything. It's hard. Your self is destroyed from your your parenting, your your parents. You know, lack of parenting. Yeah. So or- you have to like build up. You essentially have to learn how to be a person and then parent a person. That's right. Which is crazy. I agree. I I, I had the same similar experience where I kept going, my life is over. I no. it's I'm it's over. I like why was I even trying to have a career <laughs> to then stop and do this? I mean, even though obviously I love my kids and I love being a mom, I've transitioned yeah. into a different path, yeah. but it was a transition. It yeah. wasn't like, and now I'm ready. It took forever. I felt like it took too long for my kids where my kids were concerned. It took me too long to get my act together, sort of. Um, but, what do you mean? Like you, you feel like you, you, what, t- what does that mean? Took like I didn't relax into parenting oh, until right. they were like older, until they were like, uh, like way into preschool. And, and I went, okay, I'm good. I'm on this path now. I get it. This is where, this is actually where I want to be Yeah. And instead of, well, I want to be here, but I also want to be over there, which is where I was before. <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm having a hard time leaving over there yeah. and I'm not ready to leave over there. And I'm not finished over there, but I need to be, I can't be in both places. I can't. Some right. people can, but I couldn't do that. And it was not only because I'm an immersive person, so I'm not going to, I couldn't like halfway parent and then go work. I, I couldn't do that yeah. effectively because I drove myself crazy because I was failing in both places. Does that make sense? I was like, my, I, I couldn't write. I didn't have time. And I, so I was failing there. And any minute I would get to get anything done was incomplete, fragmented, just frustrating. And so I was failing in that old life. And then the new life, I was distracted because I wanted to be going back and doing the things I'd started but couldn't finish. So then I'm failing in this life. And I don't know what I'm doing as a parent. Gotcha. I have no idea where I'm supposed to be, how I'm supposed to talk, what I'm supposed to say. Oh, yeah, I know. How I'm supposed to feel. And the relentlessness of just parenting, like the math of parenting, you yeah. know, like, yeah, you're not sleeping for like, I don't know, four, oh, four years. Look maybe. at this face. I mean, I, <laughs> you look I'm fucking exhausted. Well, because I had children older. So my first baby came when I was 39. Yeah. Pregnant at 38. And then I had my second baby at 42. So like. Are you kidding me? Like I was already exhausted when I got pregnant with the second one. And right. I'm fucking over 40. So. Right. Uh, oh. It is a big difference, Man. I have to say. It's like, a big difference. I, I don't know. I'm just like so thankful that we can't afford help because I don't know how women do it like Without. alone. It's yeah. so hard. It's so hard. But what you're saying about, it's interesting. You say like, if you can't write. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Because you kind of, I know what you're saying. Because it's hard not to to, to pull focus because you have to like dip in and out of worlds. You know, yes. like even now, like I went to pick up my kid from preschool. I dropped him off. 
And then I came over here and you just, there's a, there's a bubble world of kids. And then you're like, Oh God, I'm in the real world. <laughs> no, right. That's a shift. And then you go back, back into the into bubble. Right. And then it's, it is, it's like, you have to be five different people to do that. And I remember like when I first had Ellis, I was in the car. I was going to the comedy store. I'm like, am I a comedian anymore? Like, am I allowed to tell jokes? Can I listen to Howard Stern anymore? Because I love Howard Stern, but yeah. he's so filthy. And I'm this mom and good moms don't like filth, right? right. Like, what's a good mom? Should I be baking all day? And like, <laughs> you, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. And it's really just what you can handle. Fuck, just get through it. Yeah. And just do it the way you know best. Do it the way you know best. And sometimes... I, I learned the most from watching my kids and fi- and trying to figure out who they were. Yeah. Because nobody asked who I was. They said, no. you will be this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And I, I didn't want to do that. So I was like, okay, so I need to really say, who are you and what do you need? Georgia needed me to read to her all the time. Isla needed me to never touch her (laughs) and just let her climb the walls like a monkey. They needed, Georgia needed to cuddle and snuggle and talk to me constantly. That child never stopped talking to me. And Isla basically was like, fuck off. Don't touch me. Don't interrupt me. I'm just going to be physical. Hmm. And to watch and learn was something that I learned a lot about myself doing that because I realized why I had so many problems at certain stages of my life because I'm wired, believe it or not, no one believes this, but as an infant at least, I was very similar to Isla. Mm. And that Isla was a hitter and she did not express herself verbally. George is so verbal, just like Bert. Bert can lay everything out verbally. And I never was able to do that. So for years, I would just express myself in physical ways, which was not always healthy. And I was watching my toddler do the same thing and going, oh, wait a minute, that's because she doesn't understand what's happening. So I need to help her understand what she's feeling and give her words until she can give herself words. But no one was able to do that to me. So I spent so many years angry and rageful and not understanding how I felt. Oh, that's number one. Yeah. So that was really a great thing to learn is like you just have to see who these people are yeah and what they need and that helped me grow myself yeah absolutely and it also <clears throat> i think the hardest part about parenting that people don't really nobody tells you is that you um you start to realize what you didn't have which is what you just oh, basically yeah. said as you go yeah but i i know you said i noticed that this kid's different than that kid and that kid needs that but that kid needs that And then you start going, I wish someone had noticed that stuff about me. How come nobody, wow, I really messed out, didn't I? And then there's that sadness that comes, that profound sadness Mm -hmm. that comes from realizing your parents really, look, man, and this is not to blame anybody. They they are who they are and where they were, but you just go like, fuck, that would have been really great if I had had some support that way. And because now you have to do it yourself. You have to do it with a therapist, a good one if you're lucky. Yep. And reparent and figure it out. So you don't take yeah. it out on your kids and you don't screw them up. You That's know? right. I, yeah. fe- I felt like it was a it was there was a grieving part of that part of parenting because I did the same yeah, thing. Yeah, bro. I kept going, God, I wish I'd had that. And, you know, when I started, I started this Girl Scout troop for Isla. The first couple of years, I kept thinking, wouldn't this have been nice? Wouldn't this have been nice? Now, my dad did stuff <laughs> like that, but I didn't live with my dad. I was only with him certain parts of the year where yeah. he'd go camping and he'd teach me things like what happens in a Girl Scout troop. But so I had those little pockets, but I definitely didn't have from my mother. You know, my mother took me to Girl Scouts like two or three times and was like, this is too much trouble. I'm done. It's convenient for them, right? Well, my mom wouldn't even let me join. She's what are these communists wearing their fucking (laughs) uniforms? And then she'd say... Of us selling cookies? Are you kidding me? Door to door? No fucking way are going to get kidnapped, <laughs> molested in the uniform. Brownie, what is brownie? Like, I'm like, please, let me just join the brownies. Like, all they do, you know what I mean? When are just going to do macrame or whatever, lanyards <laughs> right. and shit. Oh, I begged her. She wouldn't let me do it. How funny. Yeah, I was, tra- I, was I just, let me be normal. Let me do one normal. Right. And Arne, do you have this thing where you feel like a space alien? Like, did you feel like, yeah, that that's a huge thing for me. 
but then again, I just turned it into being a comic. You know, I took that weirdness and I was like, great. Well, at least I'll get paid to be weird. Well, you know what cool. helped me? I've Jesus said this before. Christ. What helped me was I read this book called Trapped in the Mirror. And it's about. Oh, I know that one. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. When I read that book, I felt like the person that wrote that book had been spying on me Oof. and like wrote down all these things about my childhood. So then from that, I went, wait, there are other people who had parents like this. And that helped me not feel so alone. Well, because you and I are both only children. Only children. Which is really wacky to have a wacky parent. Yeah, it is really wacky to have a wacky parent because you have no one else to be like, hey, did that look weird to you? Nobody. Nobody. And nobody else for them to focus on. Whoa. You know, no one else for them Whoa. to target. I you know. You the target. I know. Right? Wait, so how did you hide? What did you do to, because we both had to essentially, you had to dissociate. You had to cope. How did you cope with your crazy mom? Uh, I shut down all emotion entirely. Yeah. When I was with her. I, I was the most stoic human ever. Like so stoic that I broke my ribs when I was eight and I didn't tell her for a week. And she caught me crying, uh, like hiding in my room crying because I don't know if you've ever broken a rib. It's the most painful thing ever. But I was not going to let her know that I was injured. Nope. No way. Because that's too vulnerable. That's, so, that's my problem. Yeah. <laughs> so I I hid everything from her. Yes, I, I had I. everything. I kept everything from her 100 percent. but you know my dad picked me up my dad lived an hour away so every other friday he picked me up for the weekend and i think all i felt with him was joy and happiness but all those other feelings have to go somewhere and i don't know they just came out in my 20s just in just in mess i was just a mess but um what did you do I'm, I I just hid from her and I listened to records a lot and I read a lot and I, I hid in my room and I just got lost in my own creative worlds. Yeah, I read like a that. lot. Too. Yeah. I read voraciously. Yeah, me too. Yeah, because there was no internet. There was no, <laughs> no social media. No. I'm going to look at TikTok for four hours straight, which is <sighs> probably what I, what I do, do now. now, right? <laughs> Wait, you're on TikTok? Uh, uh, no, but my kids show it to me a lot. Yeah. I oh, love it. I'm really they into They love it. it, too. Georgia just made a TikTok. Get out. I'm going to follow her. It was pretty funny. But I like the weirdos on there. Oh, like, she's pretty weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the no. one thing she did, she was like, hey, mom, do we have bleach? And I went, why do you need bleach? She was just like, I'm just doing something. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I have bleach. Um, do you have a funnel? And I was like, hold on. <laughs> what are we doing with bleach in a funnel? Nair. You know that bleach like destroys things. It like eats holes in things. Like you can't like be pouring bleach somewhere. She's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just, I'm not. You'll see, you'll see. Uh-huh. So she made this TikTok where she like uh, showed the bleach, poured liquid, was water, in, yeah. in a cup with a funnel and then splashed her face and then the next shot is she's t- totally whited out her face like she bleached herself. <laughs> That's funny. And then she did like a dance leap. Hey. <laughs> it was so crazy. I was like, "That's pretty funny." George. That's a good one, actually. It's a good one. Yeah. And she never opened the bleach. Hey, she totally faked it. Smart girl. I know, right? Let me see what else. You're on my so list. smart. Um, what's your favorite podcast to listen to? Besides your own. Besides yours, I actually love Wife of the Wife of the Party. I listened you. to a few of them. I um. I love, I'll tell you, I listened to Rogan. I listened to the Mental Illness Happy Hour. Mm -hmm. You heard that? Oh, you were on it. I was on it, I know, I heard your episode. Oh my gosh. I was like crying during your episode. It was so good. Oh, good grief. I loved it. Um, I can tell you right now. Let me look at my podcast list. I always wonder what people listen to. What are you listening to? I listen to a lot of true crime. Uh, I listened to Dr. Death I just finished I loved Dirty John I like Dirty John that was uh, cool that was a good one I like um, Serial although the last Serial was about uh, the um, justice system in the United States which I, it was was so disheartening and upsetting about how broken our justice system is um, that oh, wasn't her yeah. approach to it that's what she discovered well um, yeah I, <laughs> I could have um, told you that shit right now I'm listening to Atlanta Monster what's that um Back in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a lot of um, mass, uh, there was a serial killer in Atlanta that was killing like 10, 11 year old black boys. Mm. And I was 10 and 11 and when that was boy. going on. I just happened not to be a black boy, but, <laughs> and I didn't live in the neighborhood. They were killing people, but it's about that investigation. They caught the guy. Good. Um, but it's always been a question. He was convicted with a, 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 like an overwhelming amount of circumstantial evidence, mm. but not like any like smoking gun. So they've always said, but did he do it? 
And this is kind of like a review. Of I can't, that. It gives me so much anxiety hearing you talk about like murder. Like my husband's into all that shit too. It was yeah. murder. And I'm like, I don't want to know about it's like um it's like watching a TV show where someone has cancer. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know right, it. Right. I don't want it even in my psyche, bro. Yeah. Like I don't want murder, rape, none of that. Well, you know what I'm really into? Um there's a, a, a thing on Spotify, a podcast that Chuck D is narrating oh. about the clash. Really? And the parallels between public enemy and the clash. No. It's the fucking I just finished it right before I I should have remembered that as I pulled up. Dude, I love it. I'm, I, I'm fascinated. Out. Yeah, I've, I've been listening to uh, How I Built This. You, uh, no, but heard I heard that. that. It's Guy Raz. He's an NPR guy. Um, it's about how like CEOs or owners of big companies built their company, like Sam oh. Adams Beer or the Spanx Girl or um, uh, I shouldn't say girl, the woman who built Spanx. Um, the guy who managed Lady Gaga. Um, the guy who created Belkin and how they kind of started these mega companies from just from nothing from scratch, oh just God. from an idea. And, uh, I think there's like 22 total episodes he's done. He has, it's a kind of newish, but That's uh, it's really good. I've enjoyed that. Dude. Can I tell you, like I used to have massive love for people like that, like workaholics, essentially. I mean, from what I understand, you just work all day and, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> just, all day long, you just fucking work like, yeah. uh, What's the famous coach? Who's the coach? You're a boy who was um, not v- Gilardi, Godardi, Venardi. You are looking at the wrong Lombardi. Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi. And you know, like he was highly successful in this and that. And then I watched a documentary on him and he's like, he worked seven days a week after the games. He'd come home and then he'd watch the games and then his wife he would ignore the wife and the children. Yeah. And, and it was like, is that really the life yeah. Is this the goal, bro? Like just to work 24 seven? Yeah, it's not. What the fuck for? Like even I love Kevin Hart. No hate. Much love. No hate. But I see him and he's like, I'm still grinding. I'm getting on the plane. I'm going to do it. It's like, bro, when are you going to enjoy the success? Like, All right. You've done it. And he's hilarious and he's so talented. But I'm like, take a vacation. Right. Take just a breath. Take a like My you, husband has that problem. You got bit. it. The workaholic workaholism. Yeah, he's got a little What's, bit. What's the deal? What do you think's going on? I I don't know. He he's he didn't used to be this way. I don't know what what happened, but he works all the time. If he's not working, he's thinking about work. It's it's been a so it's a annoying. new it's a new additive to the Burt Kreischer mix. <laughs> um, I don't know when it started. It kind of crept up on me where all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I can't get you. Where are you? So we're taking a legit vacation, oh. like eight days, no work. In Bali, done. And just, oh. Like in a couple weeks. And I've like, wanted to go there my whole life. I'm so jellies. Oh, the girls are so excited. I'm excited too. Um, it's not a place I knew much about or ever had any draw to, but he's performing in Australia and he's like, why don't we go to Bali for like a week and then go to Australia? Oh okay, that's a good plan. That sounds great. So we're going to go do that. See, but I think I'm very happy for you, by the Thank way. You. And then let's pick out a bathing suit for you. Shit. Have I already you picked out two. <laughs> I get. I did get one at Land's End that was sexy mommy. Okay, what is that? It look? was mommy but sexy. I have really good boobs. Lucky. So I have to accentuate what I have that's good, yeah. so that hopefully people aren't looking at everything that's surrounding the boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just like a a, a really low cut, but but everything's covered. But okay. it, it's low cut. Is it a tankini? Is that what that's I called? I don't do tankinis. When it, that's when the tank top and then like a bikini bottom. Yeah, that's but depressing. when you swim, the tank top floats up, and then you got all these rolls hanging out everywhere, and that's just not nice. It sucks. I feel it's like nice. a tasteful one piece is mm. the way to go as a mom. Is that yeah. the mom suit? That's my mom suit. Yeah. That's I, my mom's suit. Just a tasteful one piece. Like maybe a simple, just one color. Yeah. Fuck. Something simple. Yeah. God damn it, man. I know. They're hard to find. Know. They're very hard to find. Oh, I was going to tell you. Yeah. I think what's happening with our, because my husband too is a, is like the work thing all the time. And he and I have a podcast together. So that's, that's another layer to our relationship. And it's been actually really good for our marriage because. Has it? I you. Know. One of my questions was how is it, how is it to have that podcast together? Can I, because it it's seems a, great. It's actually the one thing that's held us. The podcast is who we were before children, before oh. careers, mm. before dogs, even right. when we were poor and living down sixth street. Right. Me. Like that's around that time that we'd started doing it really. Yeah. So whenever we step into studio, 
it's like we're transported into a carefree time right. a space that's cool it is kind of cool and you know you know how hard it gets you get home and then the kids are screaming and the dogs are barking and nobody's been fed and fuck and then bedtime and da 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 da, da. so it's nice to have it now the other side is my husband too has that thing of like checking the phone i'm on the phone and the call it's to dinner time i gotta answer the, the agents and the managers and it's like dude there's got to be a time where there's like a no phone zone yeah or like, I haven't chickens. found another chicken. See, she's arguing again. She's screaming at the one. There's two nesting boxes in my coop. I have three chickens, two nesting boxes. They will use one box. And Charlotte is the bitch in the bunch. And Charlotte is screaming at Henrietta, who is on the nest, telling her to get her fucking fat ass off. And Henrietta is like looking at her nails like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Such a bitch. That you know, Henrietta. eggs lay when eggs lay. I don't know what to tell you. What a bitch. So, yeah. And then the other one, Lucy will just go up the ladder and sit on top of Henrietta, lay the egg and leave. Right on top of her. <laughs> how long does it take to lay an egg? I don't know. I don't know technically how long, but Henrietta likes to take she her takes time. takes her time. <laughs> she I'll likes to make her. everybody wait. She's like, bitch. She's the lowest time. in the pecking order. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the only way she gets, um, you know, any power. Of course. Now, how does Bert feel about you doing a podcast? He has to be livid that you're taking some spotlight because let's face it you're a hit you're Shit. a famous podcaster now Shit. hardly and um, <laughs> i just had an article written about you oh yeah right i saw that i saw it on facebook i'm very proud of you oh and i mean is this gonna hurt his ego are we in for a no no is he supportive yeah he's really supportive he yeah. is actually he i had a podcast earlier this morning and he booked one on top of mine because he doesn't look at my calendar. Mm. And I went, I already have a podcast booked. And I thought he was going to say, well, you're going to have to move it because his podcast actually makes money. Mine doesn't. Which yet. makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't yet. So, um, but he didn't. He said, okay, I'll just move mine. And I was like, oh, that's wow. awesome. Wow. He's been, you know why this podcast came about? Why? That podcast I was talking about with the guy, the behavioral analyst. Yeah, yeah. When that podcast was over, I literally fell apart for like five days it rocked me so hard i cried on the podcast it I, it totally I dismantled to me really really made me what he said this is what got me this is what gets me every damn time drew got me with something like when i did his he's the podcast. best he by the way i listen to dr me. drew a lot yeah. i listen to dr drew after dark but i've i've listened to drew's podcast before we had him on studio james but anyway yes, yeah go ahead. i love him he's the fucking best he's dude. someone i've always admired oh um, my god i love him but in that podcast when he was so showing you the the graph that shows that showed that i was 98 percent other focused he said on the podcast when i see this it tells me there was childhood trauma Mm. And I went, are you fucking kidding me? I've been in therapy for this long and this still shows up. Something is wrong. This is bad. Like I am clearly not healing myself or growing if I'm still in this place after all this time. This is not OK. I'm not OK with this. So that was the probably the biggest part that made mm. me reevaluate what I was doing in my life in general. And I literally for like five days was a complete mess. And mm. Bert was great. He let me be a mess. When I'm a mess, he has he becomes a mess. Mm. He has a hard time. I'm the solid one. So when the solid one is upset, he's like, wait, what am I supposed to be doing here? I'm not sure what I what's what am I supposed to be doing? So I sat down with myself and I said, you know what I think? I think that everyone else's wants are a need but my needs are a want. Mm. I don't have any needs. I'm not allowed a need. My need is something frivolous that can be passed over. But your want is definitely a need. And I, if it's a need, then I got to take care of it because it's a need. So I'm going to start shifting that. I need a creative outlet. I need a place that's just for me. I need something that takes precedence over pickup, drop off and I can't seem to make it working out <laughs> so I need something where I'm accountable to other 
people in some form. I need I I need that. Mm. So Bert said, Bert had been telling me for years to start a podcast. He said, you need to start a podcast. That's what you need to do. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. What, what would I talk about? This is stupid. I don't know what I what. Who wants to listen to me? I don't have anything to say. I'm just a comedian's wife. Oh, well, isn't that nice that she gets to have a podcast? She's just a comedian's wife. And then one day I was listening to a podcast and, and I was looking for something else to listen to. I was walking the dogs and I went, you know what I would like to listen to? I would like a podcast where I felt like I was eavesdropping on someone's conversation. Like yeah. a bunch of great wire friends. Tap. That's what Joey Diaz is. You're listening to the wire tap. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yep. I want something that's like, all my friends are so positive. They're such great people. They all have great stories. A lot of them have similar backgrounds. We all never run out of shit to talk about. Sometimes I'll talk about a topic. Sometimes I'll just shoot the shit. Sometimes I'll talk about a bag I want in a raffle. And then sometimes I'll talk about depression because that's what I'm interested in. So let me just try it. And from the first time I did it, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is, I love this. This is really fun. And you're great at it. Well, thank you from you. That's an amazing compliment. Please. But I really enjoy it. But that's why I started it. It was because of that behavioral analyst saying, this, this is from childhood trauma and me going, mm. I'm, I'm, I am no longer accepting that. I am not okay. You should have built your own closet. That. I should have built my built fucking own. his and hers closet. God damn it. Let's tear it down. Let's just do it. shut it down. Yeah. But, but, I, but that's so fascinating, Leanne. That's such a huge breakthrough. Because I think you're, oh, it's so great. I think I, I think you're right. Because for the longest time, I didn't have my own comedy hour, my own special. Mm-hmm. And I was like talking to my therapist. And I'd always give ideas to like Tom, like you should do this. Mm-hmm. You, or not that he, not that I write for him, I don't. But I mean like, or the podcast, like be a secret contributor. Yeah. I'm always like behind the scenes. Same here. And she was like, well, what if you, what if you just did your own thing? And I was like, what? Like <laughs> you can do that. You can Wait, do what? that. And I think too, and I think it's really hard when you become a mom and you become responsible for other people's little tiny lives. And you and I are trying to do it so right. I'm trying mm-hmm. to do it, trying to give them everything. You start to think like, do I deserve to have this creative outlet? Yeah. Can I do this? Is there space in the mommy brain? Because that shit is real. Yeah, it is real. And I remember like the first time I did stand up pregnant and I, it, I wasn't perfect right. and I was so upset that I wasn't the me before and this baby's eating my brain <laughs> and then and but guess what I just take notes up now right guess what I have mom brain because I don't fucking sleep at night and I have two little kids and I can't you know I don't get the luxury of sleep a lot so my, I'm gonna brain fart here and you're gonna have to tolerate that right less than perfect me this hour was awesome when I was washing dishes <laughs> but that was two hours ago. And right, right now, I, that's the way I, my brain would be, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm so proud of you because I've gotten to watch you from, from how many years Infancy. have I known you now? Like long time. 14 years or something? It's, it's been a crazy. long time. But you have to, but, 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 but I think we have to surrender to the fact that it's never all going to be great. Do you know what I mean? Like you can do this podcast, you can have your kids. Back to your talking about not being able to do motherhood and working. Right. I can do that now. Now. But right. when they were little bitty. Yeah. And we couldn't afford help. I couldn't. I couldn't you give him 50 bucks. I, know, it's I crazy. mean, our, we had two kids when he asked me for 50 bucks. It's crazy. So there was no getting help for me. Oh my so God. I didn't have the option. I didn't have the old lady neighbor I could dump my kids on for two hours. I didn't have it. <sighs> you know, in-laws and parents are 3,000 miles away. And I just didn't have that option. So... So I couldn't divide and conquer the way I but could. I wish you would have, but I wanted it. I wanted it for you. Is what I'm saying. Because I, I have it now, though. Okay, good. I'm, no, I, I have not. no regrets. I really, truly have no regrets. I, it was just a transitioning process. Oh, and you know that happens for everything yeah. you know, in life, almost. And sometimes those transitions are really easy, and sometimes they're really hard. And that particular one for me was really hard. Oh, me too. Worst, like really hardest. Hard hardest thing in the world because i've started feeling terrible that i i didn't just go yep mommy yeah. let's do it best thing ever oh yeah don't you hate when bitches say that yes. I, I follow these instagram moms because i'm like <sighs> looking for models of moms you know and um I, some i love because they're so perfect and um this woman is like i'm i'm pushing my child on the swing and i've 
I loved every minute of it. I love every minute of being a mom. And I'm like, really? Then you ain't fucking doing it. Or right. you're on drugs. Or, or you're not honest with yourself. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Something's like- missing. <laughs> well, I had, yesterday I had my friend Jocelyn and her friend Kristen, who is a therapist. And they are doing this uh, series about resilience with kids. And she was saying one of the best thing she read was the good enough mom <gasps> me too right that's what i just read and you it did? helped me so much yes that's good it's wonderful but explain it to people who are listening if they're interested because i've never read it oh oh i came up with that on my own <laughs> Where i was like so you know lucky. what i'm just gonna be good enough it's gonna be good enough and it's just gonna be good enough and guess what even if you are that quote perfect mom your kid's perspective is going to be you suck here yeah you sucked here because yeah. no one ever grows up and goes my mom was just a saint <laughs> she did everything just right bullshit like they don't push against boundaries like they don't test yeah they don't test the rules of course they do it's and what do you do you don't you can't every reaction is not now sweetheart let's discuss this and come to an amicable conclusion it's not life that's not reality no. and when they go work for a boss right. your boss ain't gonna do that mm-mm He's going to chew you up and spit you out. And sometimes you got to chew your kid up and spit him out because it gets them ready for the world. Yeah, that's kind of the epiphany I had is that you're not protecting them from everything crappy that's going to happen. You're actually preparing them for all the crappy things that are going to happen. Yeah. Because nobody I know gets out of life unscathed and without tragedy and without some level of hardship and bullshit absolutely even right. the rich people even those motherfucking country clubbers even the rich people ask bird to tell you some stories about being rich and and uh these kids doing this shit to him pushing him out of a car while it's driving down the road because it was funny that would be really scary nobody ever did that to me you know uh, uh, stuff happens everywhere and you're right it's about it's about Having them develop good coping skills, I think. Coping yeah. is key. How do you cope with adversity? And then giving them <laughs> giving them what they need to grow positive self-esteem. Yeah. You know? That's so true. I've been teaching my three-year-old the phrase delayed gratification. <laughs> I have him repeat it. I go, this is known as delayed gratification. Can you oh say God. that? And he goes, I don't I go, yes, because I'm I'm teaching you how to tolerate frustration, which is the central tenet to being a healthy adult is yeah. tolerating frustration. Yeah. Because if you cannot tolerate it, your fucking existence is miserable and you're going to be a mess if you, you know, I get what I want right now. Yep. That's the root of all, you know, addiction. And, well, it's not, true. I know. Well, it is, it is a problem. It's definitely part of the problem. It sucks. It's delayed. It's delayed gratification. Or, this is interesting. What do you think your journey is with this podcast? I don't know. That's a really good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, Hmm. You know, what I keep thinking is, I'm such a curious person. I'm really curious. There is, I don't think there's much that I wouldn't be able to be curious about. And I think that that's when learning happens for everybody. So if I can be curious because I'm not shy and I can talk to anybody about anything, then maybe other people can learn from my curiosity. That's something that I've always had. My dad used to say, if you say the word why one more time, <laughs> I'm going to flip, you yeah. know, because I just say, but why? But why does it do that? But why do you have to do that? But then why does it move when you push it? But then why? I mean, my whole, I remember asking that word over and over again. So I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Like, I don't, I don't, what do you, what do you think my purpose is? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I think, I think, I mean, I I can only, I don't know. I'm not inside your head because I, I know when I started that deep bro, I had an unconscious, it was an unconscious process of like (sighs) wanting to have children and not really quite being ready and figuring out how to be a road comic and have children. It was like this growth spurt, this, this place in time. Yeah of that Mm -hmm. and by the end of that steep bro i'd had my second kid and i was like all right i think i'm transformed like i am the person i wanted to be when i set out to do this that's amazing well yeah because you go like i'm curious about all this what was i curious i was curious about everything too like existential questions and this and that I, i don't know and i've totally changed since i did that show i don't fucking believe in god anymore do you ever did you ever believe in god 
Yes, I still believe in God. I I do very much believe. Really? Yes, I believe there is a higher power. I go I go back and forth from saying God to the universe, like something yeah. that's bigger than me. I absolutely believe in that. Yes, I've lost all faith. Have now. you really? Yeah, I don't fucking think there's any order to any of this. No, I don't know why. Well, I'll talk to my therapist about that. <laughs> but for you, I sense a triumphant reclaiming of the creative side of Leanne Kreischer. Bring it on. I sense because you've you. You know what I mean? You've got, you were so, you were a writer. You were a yes. writer. You spent hours creating and to shut that brain down and go straight into mommy town is really fucking hard. Like to completely shut down. Like I literally wrote a lot of my first mom jokes that are in Mother Inferior, breastfeeding my first son at three in the morning and right. depressed and like, right. mother, I'm going to fucking, right. I, it was compulsive. I had to write a joke yeah. about it. I mean, you've probably got like a good 10 or 15 years inside of you just like. Well, you know, Whoa. it's funny you say that. I, I, um, uh, my friend Jocelyn is a ghostwriter. You know, I wrote this Bible. It's not, I didn't write it, but my, I have a Bible that I made, um, of phrases and quotes and lyrics from songs and poems and speeches and whatever. I like this idea. You've told me Something about this. That, I love it. Yeah, I, I have this book of all these things that kept me in integrity, kept me walking the path I had claimed I wanted to walk. So if I ever felt like I'd made a mistake or I was confused about something, I would go to this book and just open it up and see what came out. And the things that I put in the book. So there were things that I felt I owned that were part of of who I wanted to be. So I'd ask Jocelyn about, I've had several people email me and ask me if I would publish that. But I mean, it's a lot of other people's work, right? It's other people's quotes and stuff. And Jocelyn was like, that's actually a lot easier than you think. So before you got here, I was just mm. going through that to print out all the stuff because I, I hand wrote my Bible, but I typed it up because I had intended on just like printing them all out and binding them for my kids when they graduate high school because I wanted to say like, this is what I learned. So oh. take this and add to it and leave some blank pages in it. Because when I wrote that book, I would just open the book and write wherever it was. I didn't go like page one, page two, page three. <laughs> yeah. I just opened it because I wanted it to be a random collection because not one part of my life is more important than the other. So I didn't want it to be like, here's my 20s, here's my 30s. Right. Maybe that would have been interesting to reflect on. But my intention was that life is is cumulative and so one doesn't you know i don't know i just want it to be really random so yeah. i i started compiling that to see if maybe i could self-publish it or something and then jocelyn said um i said you know i did this podcast called the mental illness happy hour and bert listened to it and he was like that's really an amazing story and then someone else said god you should write that as a book and i was like I'd always thought about writing my memoirs for my kids because there's so many things about even just growing up in the South that they would never know that I wanted them to know. Cause like you, I'd be like, what if I died and they don't know this story about this one guy that was in my hometown that I did this with. And I want them to know all this stuff because it's so different from what they experience of me and from what they experience of life in general, growing up in the Valley and Southern California is very different than rural Georgia. So Jocelyn was like, okay, just take the mental illness happy hour and have it transcribed. And there's part of your first draft. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll self-publish this Bible. And then maybe after that, I'll work on that and start writing again. And I have been writing little sh uh, like memoir pieces. Like when memories come up, I've been writing them down. It's great. Of like... You know, a conversation I have with my grandmother that was so bizarro, like three months ago, I was like, I've got to fucking write this down. No one is going to believe this. And I'm going to forget it because in my mommy brain, yeah. I'm typing this up. So I typed it up and I was like, well, maybe what I do, maybe I figure out how to put that in my memoir somehow or make a yeah. separate book of like things of crazy things that I've experienced, witnessed people I know from growing up now those aren't as creative perhaps as making up a story from scratch which is what i used to do but a lot of it is very um rich yeah you know but isn't that how you kind of create stuff right like you pull from here you, you pull do, yeah. from here so maybe if it has time to marinate yeah and then one morning you'll wake up you uh -huh. know like it could be a, a week from now it could be a year from now and you'll go 
that's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, and like I've, there's jokes that have take, taken 10 years totally, to write. Yeah. Cause you're like, I, I don't know, there's something there, but it's, and then one morning you're, you're driving, you're in the shower and you're like, that's it. That's the fucking that's thing, the man. That's I'm the thing. That down. But you got to write it down. You got to write yeah, it down. You got to write it down. That's the problem is I don't write stuff down Ooh. when it comes to me. So I need a little notebook I keep in my purse so I can write it down. My fancy $5,000. Your $5,000. <laughs> or, or in your phone. In a phone. Your in notes. A note. yeah, I do I know, it in my yeah, notes. That's a good idea. Um, but I did, I have this TV show that's been kicking around in my head too. So I need to say, the last thing I wrote before I got pregnant was a pilot. Oh, um, man. Uh, so I have this TV show that has been kicking around in my head too. So I just need to sit down and do it. You know, some of the, I hate to admit this about myself, but, but I really don't believe in myself. Like I, 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 like people probably think I do. I really don't. That's a big one, bro. Yeah. And we believe in, I a hundred percent. I've had the same thing and it's because. We support other people, right? right? Like you would be like, I'm gonna help Bert yeah. achieve his thing. Absolutely. I'm gonna help blah blah blah. Yep. And then it's what about but what about Leanne's fucking closet? It all comes back to the fucking There's the closet. closet. Damn it. I should have bought the his and hers closet. Should have built it. What about Leanne's closet? Yeah, what about Leanne's closet? What about what Leanne needs? I, I have a really I still have a really hard time with that. Um, I really do. I talked I about know. it in therapy today. You did today? I did today. Fuck, what did she say or he say? I don't know what it was. She, um, well, I talked about like I screwed something up last week and I was having a hard time letting it go. Mm. And she was like, what's that attaching to? That's attaching to something really old because we all make mistakes and you forgive everybody their mistakes, but you're not letting this one go. What's it attaching to? And I was like, it's attaching to my mom always saying, oh, you're never going to do that. <gasps> you're too short to be a model. Oh. You're too curvy to be a model. You're never going to write because you can't do anything without a partner. That that tape, you're you don't why why would you even start that? You don't know what you're doing. And then I go, "Yeah, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. Why would I think I started that?" So I made a mistake and and I keep going, "Why did you even try?" Why would you do that? And you fight against that voice. But I, when she explained it to me, I went, oh, well, I can just let that go. She said, that's right. When you go figure out what that reaction is attaching to at mm. the core, mm. when you figure that out, it does go away. It dissolves. If it you can dissolves. trace the trigger back. That's right. When the, when the anger is bigger than just that thing, that yeah. moment, I yeah. know, too, that it's attached. Yeah. Yeah. You go, well, that's not today. That's, that's a wound from 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. That's some deep shit bro bro right but uh that is huge that when are you gonna when are you gonna root for yourself land when are you well, gonna root for yourself that's so funny i do root for myself in certain arenas that you feel safe in that yes. your mother didn't fuck up for yes. you yes but in in the arena of the arts i have a hard time rooting for myself so Why? this podcast is the first it's your di your tippy toeing and it's well because it's the step. hater tape see here's the crazy part of when you become a creative person, when you assume the identity of the comedian, of the writer, of the actor, of the dancer, whatever it is, mm -hmm. there's a hater tape, right? And you mean in your own head? In your own head. And hey, man, you could go to therapy until you're fucking dead in the ground. But and your mom could be dead or your daddy, whoever told you you were too fat, too ugly, too short. Da, 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 da. Yeah. They're dead. Guess what? That tape is still playing. The right. hater tape. Right, right, right. And then there's actual haters. I always tell people who oh, ask me, I want to be comedian, what should I do? I go, number one, keep it to your damn self. <laughs> Shut up and do the and work. just do it, right. Put your nose down and do right. the work. And in 10 years, when they see your name up on the fucking marquee, then you can be like, how you like me now, bitch? Catch me outside. That's right. That's my shit. But if you tell the haters too early, if you, do you think you're going to get support from certain people? You may not. Yes, true. Do not put your eggs in other people's emotional baskets. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Because I tell my I tell my mom, well, she came to see me do therapy, uh, therapy, uh, uh, stand up the first time I did it. And I did fine. I didn't bomb. I didn't kill. I just did fine. Yeah. And she goes... Uh, you know, it's not like uh, what you are saying is funny. It's like, <laughs> I was like what? She goes, it's like how you say it or something. Like, I, first of all, this doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but but you know, sometimes people say things unintentionally, and it dissuades you even right from believing in your own <clears throat> your own juice. Man. Yeah, some asshole tells you, you know, you should do this instead, and then you listen. It's like, dude. 
Don't listen. Follow your own path. Block it out. Right. Well, I'm in. I'm really solid in this in this arena. I'm proud like, of you. I feel I love really it. good, and I I even got some suggestions from somebody, and I went, yeah, but that's not what I'm trying to do. So p- appreciate it, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be that. I'm not trying to be Oprah. No, I'm just trying to be Leanne, and I'm I'm cool. So thanks, and that I didn't attach to me at all. Mm. Um, so I'm like I'm. I like what I'm doing but here. The other thing attached to you. What what yeah, stuck? Right. What was the cross? It was that I did some I made a mistake. You made a mistake. I you made weren't a mistake. perfect at it. You didn't do it perfectly. Yeah, and... I made I made I looked like a rookie for a second. And I oh. and then and then something I thought something was gonna happen that didn't, and I was like, fuck, I totally fucked that up. You fucked it, yeah. yeah. Is your bad and oh yeah, you can't you're not allowed to make mistakes. And I can't do anything by myself. I'm not smart right. enough. You're not smart. To do oh anything by myself. boy, that's a deep one. That's in that deep? deep cut. Yeah, uh, you're just not smart enough to do that by yourself, Leanne. <laughs> oh, <laughs> from the woman who would say, "Why are you reading books? That's a waste of time." <laughs> wow, that's a Bill Hicks joke. What you reading for? What you not, reading for? What are you reading? But I don't believe she listened to Bill Hicks, but <laughs> I think that God. was her actual belief. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Our moms were. My mother. I used to sing and dance all the time in the kitchen I just sang and I was just full of fucking joy and she would come and she'd say you know you're not a very good singer <laughs> five right five and she's telling me you're not a good dancer your legs are horrible like mine oh and I was my like, god so now I sing and dance all the time around the house yeah. and my son Ellis he goes no singing no singing no, no singing. daddy he Why? hates it he hates everyone hates my fucking singing and dancing Why? but you know what F all the haters man I'm gonna yeah. sing I'm gonna dance F what all you, the haters. What are you going to do, bro? I got to live my life, man. Totally. Because you're going to be dead in the grave. You're going to be dead one day. I sing all the time, too. And what? I was also told I should never sing ever. By your mom? Yeah. Fucking bitch. And by two choir directors. You should never <laughs> sing ever. <laughs> Just stand in the back and move your mouth. That's what one of them said. And I was like, uh, okay. And I sing constantly. And my yeah. voice cracks. I love it. Yeah. Because I love to sing. Yeah, me too. I'm not selling tickets for somebody to watch me sing. Yeah. It's for me. I don't. I don't need to right? go to Carnegie Hall with this shit. Hell no. I don't care. It's just fun. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, good. I'm rooting for you, Leanne. Well, thank you. You're gonna do great. This is a great. This is a great project for you. This is awesome. It's been very healing. It's been very positive. Um, very very positive. So what? What? Uh, here's another thing I wanted to ask you. Yes. Where's mommy. your favorite place to perform? Oh, where? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where in the world or just on? Yeah. You know what? I I love, uh, I like the comedy store a lot these days. You do? I do. I like Ohio. I like. Uh, so funny. Bert loves Ohio. Yeah. He loves I like it. Ohio. I like Cincinnati. That go bananas. I don't know what it is. Oh, Denver's fucking bomb. Yeah. Denver's like smart people, progressive people. Happy people. Happy people. Yeah. They're healthy positive, people. Happy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro. I like Denver a lot. Toronto's crazy good. I don't want to hear these comedians. Aren't you sick of hearing about comics talking about comics? No. Really? I don't talk about comics. Bert and I don't <sighs> talk about that much. Oh, That's, yeah. We talk about his own creative stuff, but I, I, we don't really talk <laughs> about the drama in the world of comedy much because I don't know half the people he's talking about. That's uh, one thing. Okay, that's one thing. That's one reason why our marriage works, I think, too, <laughs> is that I... Unlike you and Tom, yeah. I am not in that world. Yeah. So I'm super safe, but, right? And I'm super <laughs> yeah. like uh, family. It's like a different compartment. So yes. Even though I'm involved in his career heavily in that I read all his emails and I help you know schedule stuff and I help schedule the podcast and I do a lot of stuff. I don't go. People constantly say, so um, you must go to the comedy store every time he goes. I've never been. I've never been to them. kill myself. Because I'm like, somebody's got, then I have to hire a babysitter. I know. Why am I going to do that for him to do a 10 minute set? I'm know. not doing that. And people are like, are, do you watch Tom all the time? Like, no, no. I hear Tom 24 seven. Like, right. it's not that different what you see in the. Right. Yeah. yeah. I hear you, bro. What was I going to fucking say to you though? At that part I do wish because there are times where I'll be drifting off to sleep and he wants to watch somebody's comedy special. Uh-huh. And to me, that's like work. Yeah, like, it is work. Don't fucking hit. And I'll be like, why? Why can't I just watch <laughs> so-and-so special? God, you're you such a weirdo. Like him. Why? Yeah. Why? It's why so can't? mad. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I want to sleep. And if I hear someone's doing stand-up, my brain will flick on yeah. and I'll want to like critique it or think about, hey, that's cool. That's, you know, whatever. 
and I can't, dude. So that kind of bothers me. But then we get to gossip about other comedians, yeah, which yeah. is really special. That's pretty awesome. Because I think that comedians are, um, Matt Fulshron said this, um, musicians are united by which what other musicians they love. Mm -hmm. Comedians are united by what other comedians they hate. Oh, interesting. Like who we talk shit about is more important than who we love. That's pretty <laughs> fascinating. I, I mean, hello. Yeah, it does happen a lot. I do yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Because like, listen talking. to Bert talk, like how we talk to Bert, Tom yeah. and I. It yeah. is like shit talk city. Like who's got the gossip about so-and-so? That is true. It's a yeah. real small town, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> everybody knows everybody. It's a little uh -huh. incestuous, some of it. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's everybody. pretty that's pretty that's pretty interesting to be an outsider on the inside. Does that make sense? I'm an outsider. Imagine. I don't have nothing to do with it, but to watch the people that come in the man cave and the personalities and what you hear is happening in social media with that person who seems so normal. Mm. That person seemed like really normal. And then you're like, he did what? <laughs> what? <laughs> is he like psychopathic? Yes. What the heck? Yeah. yeah I'll tell crazy. you, there's like two kinds of comedians that I've known over the years. There's those of us that are crazy and we know what kind of crazy we are and yeah. we deal with it. Right. And those are the healthier comedians. Absolutely, those are your, yeah. That's your husband. That's my husband. Rogan, I'd say Ari, like our group. Like we all kind of know how we're fucked up and we actively deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that are in so much denial mm. that they're like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's great. Although the anxiety is eating them alive and their lives are falling apart and they're so sabotaging. Mm -hmm. And they're, it's the awareness of how fucked up you are and what you can do about it. I wonder if those people have like a mental problem. Yeah. It's called I, mental illness. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I'm, no, seriously. I yeah. wonder if they have like, borderline personality disorder or sure. bipolar disorder or something because there's no awareness of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's a, for some people, not for everybody, but there's two people I can think of in particular <laughs> where I go, they're fucking crazy. Uh -huh. Like they're, you don't get in an argument with them because it won't matter. And, and I know who you're talking about. <laughs> you do? You know both of them? I know one. I can. I know you know I one. I could put a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag you on. You could. You could. And you would win it. You would win it because you would be right on one. I bet you could think a little bit on it and yeah. you figure out the other one too. Of course. Or I just go, wow, that's really a shame. But that's what I'm saying is that it's it's. It could be mental illness that's going untreated. That's yeah, that's what I think it yeah. is. Or they're not aware of like, hey, dude, I'm I might be fucking bipolar. I should get on some meds or whatever it is. Yeah, especially yeah. people with BPD. They don't need there. There's nothing wrong with them. They're by, by, with no, um, everything's wrong with you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's you. Well, anything no. else we need to talk about? I don't want to keep you all. Day. No, I got. I'm fine, bro. I gotta have a guy come over and fix some shit in my house. My husband FaceTime me. How much do you hate when your husband's on the road? Let's talk about that. Hate? Yeah. Oh, you love it? <laughs> maybe maybe we have a different idea of what that good, what that looks like. So uh, you guys have the flight attendant relationship where like one of you is a flight attendant. So they're gone for like a week here, a few days here, and then they're back. Yeah. So it's like perpetual, not honeymoon. But it's like, you're back. Yay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. You're well, back. Yay. I'll tell you why it works <laughs> for me and why it works, I think, for Bert. We both get bored really easily. Mm. So if we were doing the same thing every day, every week, all year long, we'd both be really bored. Mm. That's one. Two is I actually am a really tidy person. Mm. If I had to live with slobby McSlob, all the time, I would go crazy. So it the separation where I literally, the day he leaves, my house is in complete order. <laughs> and people will come in and go, oh, Bert's gone. And I'm like, yeah. My cleaning lady goes, oh, Bert's not home. She can tell the minute she walks in the front door yeah. if he is home, unless he left at like three in the morning. Yeah. But if I have any, if I have two hours to myself, <laughs> that house is ship fucking shape. Wow. And that works for me because then I go, I can allow him, I can tolerate his shit in these pockets of time. Even when he's home for three weeks, I can tolerate that too. So it sounds like he comes home and it's like a whirling dervish and it's just chaos and shit's everywhere and he's blowing boogers on the wall yeah. and shitting everywhere. You got it, you got it, you got yeah. it. Yeah, and then accurate. he leaves yeah. and it's like, let's let's everybody get combobulated. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And then Hurricane Burke comes home and fucks everything up. That's right. Yeah. I'm not sure how much of that has been good for raising kids. Right. Because I'm like, bedtime's 8.30, dinner's 6.30, blah, blah, blah. He comes in and and it's very hard to keep that on track. So he sabotages the whole family's uh, scheduling. Yes. he's like, let's stay up. I haven't yes. seen you guys. Yes. Everybody up. We're partying. Yes. And then it's like a school night. Is yes. that what he, Oh, my Saturday, God. Saturday, Sunday is Monday, Tuesday for him. Right. Oh, right. Of course. Yes. His Saturday, yes. Sunday is yes. Monday, Tuesday. So he always wants to do something Monday, Tuesday. And I'm like, so school night. And then he accuses me of being a big Debbie uh, Downer. Aren't you the square, I'm, mom? I suck so hard. <laughs> and I'm like, but it's a fucking school night. And he, he gets really frustrated when there's a bedtime. And it's been something that's been really hard. That's yeah. been hard. Um, but that is one of the reasons it works, too, is because if he lived here all the time, he'd be the same way. Every yeah. night's a Saturday night right. for him. <laughs> so I don't think it would change. It gives them pockets of structure. Right. So they know what structure looks like. Yes, 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 yes. And so then when the chaos comes, <laughs> there are times when Georgia will go, I just need to go to bed. <laughs> and I go, cool, no problem. And Bert's like, what the fuck you mean you need to go to bed? We're up, no, we're up, no, no. And I step in and go, no, she just needs to go to bed. She just leave her alone. She needs to go to bed. Oh, fine, whatever. I mean, I don't know where she came from. Who has boundaries in this house? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> she, I mean, she only eats one ice cream and that's enough. And so he <laughs> makes fun of Georgia all the time because she has such healthy boundaries. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, she and Isla would eat the eight foot long banana split every day. <laughs> and George is like, why? That's so, I mean, so much sugar. I could never. <laughs> uh, and then you get so overweight and I don't understand. And he's like, what? Who is this kid? Yeah. But that's one of the reasons it works is the ebb and flow of his chaos. Right. And then he goes to a hotel room and can be fully in his chaos. Yes. So that I don't have to deal. With, if I ever travel with him, I'm like. Four towels. He uses all four towers in one shower. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm here too. Do you not even think, hey, maybe I should save one towel for my wife? What's the big deal? Just call and get a towel. Well, I don't want to call and get a towel and wait 25 minutes for a damn towel. Just use three towels. That's not how I function. Because he's used to being by himself. How know? do you not murder him when he doesn't save you a towel? I feel like that's... I'm 98% other focus. That's true. <laughs> That's right. That's I only right. 2% value myself. Oh, so, so I go, I so don't need a towel. I got to take this quiz, man. What's this guy's name? I got to go. <laughs> his name's Jair Rodriguez. All right, I'm calling I'll, him I'll over. send you his information. Would, He's love. lovely. He's in like Houston or somewhere. And he flew out here <sighs> on his own dime and did this test for us. And it totally fucking blew my mind. I'm going to do it. What's his name? Jawar Hello. <laughs> Is that from Head of the Class? Remember Jawar? Yeah, Hello, that's a character in Head of the Class. Uh, Jair Rodriguez. Jair Rodriguez. Yeah. Please do it for us. Do it for Tommy and I. That'd be interesting. Oh, I'm sure he'd love to. He didn't God. even know who Bert was. He just good. His even better closest friend said, "This is my favorite comedian," Aww. and he just reached out and he was like, "I've never even seen your stand up." So do you? Since you're, but that's good to know that you're other focused because I think that would throw if I were with Bert and I was his partner and we had children and you really have to kind of maintain your shit when you have a family to run. Mm-hmm. It would make me so violently angry with him mm-hmm. that he's so himself focused. Mm-hmm. I would want to fucking kill him. You know, I talked to Drew about this. I was, I said, you know, he's so narcissistic and Drew corrected me and Drew is right. He's not narcissistic. He's just very self-focused. He's not like you're mm. wrong. I'm right. He's mm. like, oh, I was just thinking about me. Oh, I was just thinking about me. It's not that I wasn't thinking about intentionally not thinking about you that's not how he works he's not he would never intentionally he doesn't go fuck leanne i'm using all four towels right he uses all four towels because that's how he functions not thinking how it affects other people see i feel like that's a male trait too it is somewhat his is just extreme yeah because i watch it in my two well two little boys but um, my husband sometimes i'll be like yes but i know what you're saying like he will the, okay, I'll give you a for instance. Uh, he hasn't been home for a long, for a while. He's been touring consistently. Yeah. And our oldest boy <clears throat> is having a little separation anxiety and he misses yeah. every, you know, the family together. And so I was like, great. This weekend we're all hanging out, whatever. And he's like, uh, he gets a text from his buddy. And he, oh, will you go pick up Isla? <laughs> Thank you, babe. <laughs> wow. Ran three miles. So proud of you, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's like, but uh, okay, he gets a text from his friend and he's like, oh, maybe I'll go to Vegas on Saturday night. And I was like, um, <laughs> like 
or I don't know, spend time with your children that we've all been waiting for you. You know what I mean? And yeah. he immediately was like, oh, I know, babe, I would have come back that night. God. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Okay. You know, just checking, like, just checking. Yeah. Just cool. It's good. Uh, and that silly happens me. Too. That happens too. But he went skiing with a bunch of guys God. after he'd been on road for a while. And I was like, really? You will not have seen your kids for weeks. And then I, and then I adjusted myself and I was like, you know what? He actually only goes on the road or spends time with his family. Right. He never does anything with a friend ever. I know. And he needs that too. They need so it too. They do. But you know what we need to do is mm-hmm. plan our fucking getaway too. Bring it. Yeah, bro. Why I'll don't go we do like, anytime. What are we, where are we going? Let's go to mom mom getaway. Okay. Um, where would you like to go? Not Vegas. Do you like to, I mean, I like to chill hard. You like like to chill hard. So do you like to go somewhere that's like a resort that has spa? Yeah. Okay. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let's find a fucking spa. I love that. Let's do the comedy wives retreat. Totally. And we're going to podcast during sober October. Yeah. Sober October. Now, see, you said Sober October sucks for you. It's fucking it. awesome for me. What are you talking it's about? awesome for me. My <laughs> husband's sober oh, for yeah, 30 I days. Mean, I'm thinking about that. Sorry. What? I forgot about that. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry that he would be sober. Yeah, he's sober for 30 days. <laughs> and I'm, first five days is fucking rough. And then after that, I'm like, oh, my God. Compassion. Oh, my God. Thoughtfulness. Oh, my God. Hi. Wait, so you're telling me that self that self-centeredness dissipates without the use of alcohol. Like he actually becomes more other focused when he's not drinking. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I think so. I think the drinking, Mm. here's the thing. I talked to Drew about this also. Mm -hmm. His drinking is relative to his anxiety, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What alleviates his anxiety is a focus. Mm. Sober October is a focus. They're doing hot yoga. They're doing all these challenges. He's going to focus on being sober. He's got to focus on winning this challenge. He's focus, focus, focus. So that focus somehow calms his anxiety. So he, he I, or maybe he calms his anxiety so he doesn't need to drink or whatever. Because, I, you know, the thing about Bert is if he doesn't want to drink, he just doesn't. And he doesn't seem to have any real adverse. He didn't have shakes. He didn't have sweats. He didn't have any of that detox stuff. He's a little bit moody. But not really. Yeah, he's pretty... Like, he's the same. He, and also when he drinks, I would say that he's the same. He's the exact like, same. He Louder. just came in here and yelled. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just ran through my mouth. Like, that's who he is drinking Or whatever. sober. Yeah, same guy. Yeah. I don't think it really affects him It does. Lot. The only way it affects him if he, if he gets upset with me, he's terrible to argue when, when he's been drinking. Oh, boy. Because he can't hear. It's all about what whatever's going on for him. He can't oh, he can't hear. But when he's when the next morning I'll go, now let's talk about it. He can hear everything. That's the only thing that's a little different. But he's not like combative or argumentative even. He's not a, a fight picker. No. Or anything like that. But like if I did something that hurt his feelings at a party where we're drinking, he's much more hurt than if he if it had happened sober. He doesn't recover as easily. Of course. Or I, I don't get much benefit of the doubt. When, you know, not like Leanne didn't mean to hurt my feelings that, you know, I'll talk to her about that later. That doesn't happen when he's been drinking. He's like, oh, you hurt my feelings so bad. And this is why you hurt my feelings. And sometimes I wonder, did I marry the right person? And I'm like, <gasps> oh, he does not. <laughs> and then I go, OK, baby, you need to go to bed. <laughs> he does not. Because let me tell you something, boy, there ain't nobody on this planet can be married to you but me. No, oh, shit. nobody. So you just thought we'll talk about it in the morning. That is real talk <laughs> right there. Oh, shit. I don't listen to half that shit he says because he doesn't believe it himself. Yeah. He's just talking out of his head. Yeah. Not not drunk. Even even when we fight, sometimes when he's sober, I go, you don't know what you're saying. In my brain, I go, you don't even mean or know what you're saying. So I'm actually not going to listen. Yeah. And then we'll talk about this when you've calmed down. <laughs> and then I'll listen to you. Yeah. God, you guys are soulmates. You're meant to be. He's one lucky MFer. F Definitely, bro. He's really lucky. But you guys are... I don't know. You go together well. It seems like it works for you, which is great. Well, I'll tell you this. My daddy loved me, still loves me, just as exactly who I am. And so does Bert. So I think I found yes. that. I think you're 100% right. And he adores you. Yes. Bert adores you. Every piece of me. Even the yeah. redneck background, even the poor thinking background. Loves you. There's not one single part that he goes, pass. 
<laughs> I don't like that part. He doesn't like that I'm stubborn, but I think if he had was married to someone who wasn't stubborn, he'd run all over them. I think he needs you. I mean, this is just an outsider. Obviously, I'm not in your marriage, duh. But I feel like you put the boundaries on for him a little, and maybe that that's what he likes. Like you're, you 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 balance each other. Yeah, we do. Because yes. he would be like, fuck it. You know, we're going to buy uh, this big thing and we're going to buy a new, wa- we're going to buy a bus, Leanne. Yeah. And the bus is going to have 10 wheels and 10 stories. And yeah. We're put a wrap around of the kids. And you're like, no, yeah. I'm not going to do that, Bert. We're going to dream on dream. We're going to buy an Arby's. It's going to be great. Like, <laughs> you don't need to buy an Arby's. No. What makes you and Tom work? The, I think besides we're un- the bandwidth. The band, narrow emotional bandwidth is key with us because we, um, we both get uncomfortable by the same things. I think Tom and I are really united in what we both don't like, if that makes sense. Kind of the way comedians are, where you're like, I hate that guy. Um, we both enjoy not doing the same things, if that makes sense. Like, Sort of. Like, okay, friends, we both have similar loves and like the value system you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Core, core beliefs are very compatible. Right. Extremely compatible. I don't ever want to be divorced. I will right. not be fucking divorced. Yeah. Same as him. He grew His parents have been married for 40 years. Yeah. That's important to us. Family is important. Marriage is important. Right. Being good to people is important. Mm-hmm. Not being a shit dick or a douchebag. Yeah. Being, yeah, kind. Yeah. Good. Authentic. Authentic. All that stuff is important. Um, but it's also what we don't do together like he and i will never go to a music festival right we will he will never throw a surprise party for me because that would give me a, a severe anxiety and and agita, agita um yeah that that kind of stuff we like the same things so it sounds like you understand each other yeah really well yes that you get yes. you get you get each other a hundred percent like i know I know what that dude's thinking. Like I can look at Tommy and I'm sure this just comes from being with somebody for 15 years and just the way that he's like, <sighs> like he does a gesture and I'm like, Oh, something's doing what's going on. I know yeah. it. I know what's doing there. Um, but isn't that comfortable? I love it. I love it too. I love marriage. I love monogamy. I love being a mom. I love family. Yeah. It's all the shit that I never had growing up, like stability, predictability, security. I live for it. Yeah. I fucking love it, dude. Uh, grateful for it. Yeah. Super grateful. Yeah, like I was never a good dater. I was not good at dating or like casual fucking people. I just, I can't, I'm so insecure. I can't, I can't do it. Right. I need to be with like love. I need love. Yeah. Um. And Tom's a great guy. He's a sweet yes. huggy bear. He is a great guy. And he he spoils me. He really takes care of me. He Aww. likes to take care of the family, which is nice. I like that. That's like he good. buys me nice stuff too. Like how Bert buys you stuff. Yeah. He got me to be a little more materialistic. Yeah. Um, but we laugh a lot. We do have a good sense of humor together, obviously. Yes. I remember when we were yeah. in Hawaii together. Oh my the god. The first time I met you. So much okay. Fun. First time I met <laughs> uh Push was Oh, can I call you Push? Yeah, of course. Um I always call you Push. I, at the time I had a to you, another Christina and a Christine. That's right. So I had to I just named everybody their last name <laughs> so I could keep everybody straight for other people. But we Bert and Tom were working in Hawaii. Yeah. At for the U was it for the USO? Something like that. Yes, yes. It was a very corporate, yeah. It was quite for, a gig. for Russell Peters. Yeah, yes. Right? So yes. we were all staying in a resort in on Oahu, and you and I hung out fun. all day, yep. every day, yep. and it was so much fun, and we discovered we had the same mom yeah. on that trip. We were like, oh my God, someone else has my mom. Yep. How is that even possible? I think you were the first person I had ever met that had a mom like mine. I remember we had one story that was almost identical that uh, of s- something our mom did that was really inappropriate and it was the same story oh, was it sex talk where she gave did she tell you about her edible underwear or like oral no sex? it was about douching yeah yeah yeah, yeah. in front yeah, of yeah, you yeah 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 yeah. my mom douched, yeah, yeah. douche in front of you like Ugh. you'd be on the toilet and she'd walk in and just fucking douche in the bathtub and you're like holy what has and just it, happened and it's like the old school douche yeah bag. the big like water bottle that's hanging from the shower yeah, head. yeah. dude. like lenny bruce would talk about his mother and the fucking douche bag 
I mean, why did they have to have those old douches? They had like disp- disposable douches by, I don't that, know. by the 80s. You know, they were just old school. What the fuck are you doing with a big rubber bag? <laughs> with a tube, a Ugh. big long tube and a wand at the end. How did you sterilize that? It was that terrible. Thing. It was terrible. How did you sterilize it? I don't that? know, but I wouldn't put that up my, my meow. I mean, Not, no. filthy. My meow would go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was the story. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, that happened to you, too. That's so crazy. Ugh, it's so gross. We laughed so much that weekend. We had so much so fun. So much fun. I'll never forget. We were on the ocean. And Bert goes, uh, do, do you want to see perfect swim form? <laughs> you guys want to see perfect swim? And I was like, this guy is such an idiot. I love it. And he would, and he shaved my husband's chest. He goes, I'll give you definition. And he shaved Tommy's chest. It's on the, it's on the internet still. It's hysterical. He, Bert was laughing so hard. I thought he was going to have a stroke. Wait, did I ever tell you the story that I, I cried because of Bert on that trip? No. I never told you this? Like cried like you were upset? Yes. What? What happened? So, no, but, I don't know this. This is crazy. So this is actually more about me than it is him. So let's preface it by saying that. But it was before Tommy and I, we'd just been married, I think. We were just... No, new- you weren't married yet. We were about trip. to get married. Yes. Okay. You were about to get married. Okay. So I'm about to get married. And you, like I said, you and Bert are this adult couple. You have two children, two little... They were little at They the were time. little, yeah. And... um and, I'll, and I'm, I'm starting out in comedy. I'm just starting to be a feature act, right? Mm-hmm, and your yeah. husband, Bert, he's a, a little bit ahead of us. He's headlining and this and that. And I'm talking to Bert about marriage. We're on the balcony, I think. And um, we're all drinking. And of course, I was like, I'm so nervous, though, I, to get married. Because, like, what if I have kids and st- I want to have kids? Like, how can I have a career and have kids? Yeah. And he goes, oh, you're not going to have a career push. Once you have kids, all that shit's going to be gone. Anyways, I'm going to go downstairs. And oh, like, my I God. <laughs> what a stupid ass. Well, he was, we were all drinking. I mean, you know, he was kind of just whatever. He, it was probably because that's what happened to me. I don't even know. But I remember I was just I sat on the balcony and I thought about it. And I was like, is he right? I don't know. Because I don't know. I didn't know anybody yeah. with children. I had known many people. And I just started crying. And Tom came out. And he goes, what's wrong? I go, Bert said I can't have a career and have children at the same time. And he's like, that Bert's a dope. What do you, you know? I don't listen to that yeah. guy. And I was like, okay. You know, and I also, I took it into therapy and I figured it out. But yeah. But the thanks, Bert, for making me cry on that trip. That was really cool. Well, here's a hint. He's a subconscious <laughs> patriarchal misogynist yeah, I that know. guy he's subconsciously he believes himself to be quote woke he yeah. ain't woke no. no he ain't woke at all he lives with three women and we all look at each other like are you stupid so sexist. why would you do that i know why would you say that that is so misogynistic and he'll go is it <laughs> well let me break it down for you big boy this is how it is oh i guess it is misogynistic he didn't even know that he is but the beautiful thing about him is is he can hear it when you say hey that was really misogynistic absolutely and then he goes oh okay got it of course which is why i still love bert and he's the best but uh yeah no if you tell him he'll be like oh yeah sorry oh that's yeah so that stupid. was really bad oh yeah. that was really <laughs> shitty push sorry about that Thanks, bro. Uh, he he's yeah he's real good self corrector yes he's just not real g- in the moment it just goes right from yeah, the brain well, right. right on the tongue mm-hmm. and he's just you know born and raised in Florida <laughs> you know is them it Tampa Florida boys is that Tampa, where he's from yeah well Tom's from Florida isn't he he's from Vero yeah Vero oh Beach. but Vero Beach is like <laughs> schnazzier dude isn't that it? whole fucking Florida I mean I learned how to feature all up and down Florida mm-hmm. so like I got real familiar with it it's just a, it's a whole other country. Uh, from one city to the next in Florida, practically, yeah. is a whole other country. Like, up in the top of Florida is totally different than Central Florida, which is totally different than Southern Florida. I mean, they're totally... Yeah. It's crazy, that state. I, I mean, as crazy as Georgia is, we would never have dated a boy from Florida. Really? No. Why? No, because no, no, it's no. crazier than Georgia? Because it's crazier than Georgia. <laughs> I mean, you know, every week, <laughs> Florida man, Florida yeah, yeah, man yeah, yeah, yeah. has been arrested for blah, blah, blah. Of course. Um, of course, there's a lot of great people in Florida, but no, they're all dog shit. Liam no, they are not. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Florida people are, and now people from Florida are going to go fuck you. I I'm know, from Florida. Man. Haters going hate. Well, uh, clearly it's not so bad. I married someone from Florida, and so did you. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm fucking. I'll tell you. I, I I'm just. I I grew up here in the San Fernando Valley. I'm obviously a fucking immigrant. Like, I'm a dirtbag. I just like L.A. because I grew up here. I'm not saying it's the best place in the world. I just like where I'm from. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I like my four corners. You it's know, not that I hate anybody else's. I just, I like my dumb stuff. I like know, my Target. <laughs> LA's pretty awesome. Having lived in New York City and in Atlanta yeah. and in rural Georgia, I, I don't have any experience in the Midwest, but this, there's a, it, it's a little, there's a, it's a lot more liberal than I would like in some ways. Oh, LA? Mm-mm. Oh, it's crazy. The right liberalism. Now. That's blind to well, anyone else's perspective. Oh, I don't yeah. like, but uh, I like acceptance and all that kind of positive liberalism, but not not to the detriment of anybody else's point of view. Dude, I don't like crazy that. now, especially in show business. I feel like there's this fucking far left nonsense. I don't know. Now we're getting all political, but no, the SJ, the SJW that. stuff. What's like SJW? social justice warrior, uh, not yeah. horse shit. Like that stuff makes me crazy because that's not indicative of the whole country. You know what I mean? Like, right. Um, anyway, we could. That's a whole other fucking podcast. But it I is agree. a whole other podcast. I don't. Yeah, that's the only hard part I have is that I feel like, you know, you would think as a liberal person you'd be more accepting that someone has an opposite or different point of view than your own. Right. Because liberalism to me means like there's room for everybody. But I don't think that's what's happening now. It used to be it about that. It used to that. be that way. Yeah. But now I feel like if if I were to say anything that was not in that box, I'd be totally a pariah. And, and you know, I don't feel that way in my immediate group of friends. Fuck no. And that's but, the thing, dude, is that most of us in our immediate group of friends don't have people that are enforcing these ridiculous regulations if you use that word you're this or that most normal people aren't fucking acting or thinking this way they're more moderate yeah they're moderate liberals i'm a moderate liberal (laughs) yeah reasonable people are acting this way it's reasonable far left nutbags oh you know it's hard for me to process is you know there's as much as you don't want to say there's a sliding scale for injury or trauma there is. A hundred percent. And so for someone to have the same intensity about a kiss you didn't want as a person who was raped, I think is is not healthy. No. I just think it's not healthy for society to go, those two things are equal. Because they're <laughs> not. If, if, if what's his name kissed me on the top of the head and said you did a good job, it's very different than having to blow somebody to get a job. A hundred percent. Those are two... Neither of them are okay necessarily, but right. one is uh, really. Are we going to kill people because they kissed you on the top of the head and you didn't want that? Well, I think That's what's stupid. happening is a neglecting of gray areas. It's black and white thinking, which is dangerous yeah. for liberals, for for anybody, for conservatives. Just that there's a, a right and a wrong. You're yeah. either all good or all bad, yeah. and that simply is not how the world works. No, and you can't fucking enforce that everybody think the way you do. That's the part that kills me the most. Is yeah. if you don't think the way we think, you are all bad yeah now i speaking on kevin hart who i trashed earlier for being a workaholic let me to his credit say when they came after him forcing him to apologize for jokes that he told 10 years ago he said nope i'm not doing that fuck you i already apologize i'm not doing it i loved it suck my big dick yes yeah and uh and that was awesome. And he lost the, he lost the gig that he was up with some hosting some, the Oscars some or something. donkey show. Who cares yeah. anyways? And I don't know why he's fucking doing that anyway. He's not getting paid to do it. It's a, it's horrible. But good for him. And yeah. nobody should be apologizing for jokes. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's a lunacy. And we need yeah. to push back on these idiots that are forcing this. I agree completely. Fucking who cares? Uh, who cares? Who cares? The thing that I keep saying constantly is... We're talking about the wrong stuff anyway. No shit. So you got kissed on the top of the head and you didn't like it. Well, let's talk about the fact that my dyslexic child can't get any remediation in her public school. There you go, bro. Well, so she's left to feel like shit about herself because that's not being addressed. But let's get all up in arms because Joe Biden kissed somebody on the top of the head and now he's running for president. Holy cow. That's what makes me so upset is that we've lost sight of some of the fundamental values that affects every person. Education affects transgender people. Gay people, black people, no, white people, rich people, trans people, poor people. <laughs> they don't deserve love or <laughs> What's your pronoun? What's my pronoun? Yeah. Badass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you call yourself a bitch? Right. I'll take bitch. Do you have do you have any children in your school that have different pronouns? Fuck if I know. 
I, I'm not asking that question. I'm not even feeling bad if I say yes, ma'am, no, man, yes, sir, no, sir, because I'll be damned. Because you know what? How am I supposed to know walking up on somebody with two boobs that you want to be a he? Is that osmosis? I'm supposed to know that. There's no way I could know that. Well, so for you to get angry at me for using an improper pronoun is insanity. <laughs> you have to be gracious. If you're choosing to change the rules, then you have to be gracious when someone steps on the rule. Not that I'm like, fuck you, I'm calling you a he. But how would I ever assume that? And do I need to ask every person for the 0.001% of the people in the country that feel that way genuinely? Does that mean I change my behavior for every single person I see? Are you a he or a she? Mm. Are you a he or a she? I think that's a bit unreasonable. I agree. It's, 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 it's unre- it, And that's exactly the correct word. It is unreasonable. It is outside of what is considered a reasonable person's <laughs> uh, level. Do you know what? It is, it is not rational. You're saying that, no. right? If it's a point zero 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 one percent of the population is X, why are we fucking catering to the point zero zero zero? You know, th- you, these are outliers. Now, should we hate them? No. Should you we have compassion for them. Deny them any totally. rights? Absolutely not. No. But then to get mad if I don't know that that person is a zur or whatever the fuck. A it's zur? All, yeah, zim zur zays. You heard that? What? You have pronouns. What's your pronoun? Is this, did Dr. Seuss make these up? <laughs> <laughs> zim zur zay? Yeah, I promise you. And in the academic world where all this shit trickles down from. they From the macro, yeah, microaggression? Yeah, all that horse shit too. It comes from the academics. But um, I don't know. Anyway. You know what they do? They set you up. Th- that type of thinking, in my opinion, sets humanity up for failure. A hundred percent. Because we can't succeed. You can't win any way you turn. Right. Instead of saying, please tell me, uh, instead of instead of having the person who wants to be Zim Zazer say, I'd like to be referred to as Zim and have the other person go, no problem. You're a Zim now. Please forgive me if I slip up and call you her. It's not intentional. And And giving that person the benefit of the doubt that there's a learning curve, that this is new, that I've been on this planet almost 50 years using two pronouns to identify gender. And now we're throwing in several others, some of them I've never heard of or don't even know to ask that question. Then there's got to be some compassion for learning from the people who need the learning to happen. Yeah, 100%. You can't expect old people us fucking old dinosaurs to immediately be like yeah i got it i'm on board but also i would take it a step further i don't like this regulation of how we're supposed to be thinking speaking and acting i don't like it. and fuck you if you don't like that's my right in this country isn't this what this is built on absolutely is that i'm not denying and again this is not to advocate harm to any group or no. to fuck it but what it is is like who the fuck are you to tell me How I should be speaking and thinking. Right. So what if Kevin Hart told a a fucking anti-woman joke even? You know how many male comics I adore that tell uh, anti-female type jokes? I don't give a fuck. And I'm not going to. Of course. Yeah. Am I going to limit his speech because my feelings are fucking hurt by it? It's insanity. It is. It's insanity that my feelings are going to stop somebody from saying something. It's, It's a circular thing. We're gonna. How are we gonna monitor everybody's goddamn feelings in the snowflake world? Uh, no, it's, it's not insanity. Possible. It's just. It's just completely unreasonable. It's. It's. It's an unreasonable expectation of the world. It's not achievable. No, and it was no. Especially, I mean, look, we're lucky enough in a first world country that we can even have this kind of a horse shit going on. Right. Good luck. Take it somewhere else. Take when, your fucking. When again. God we're not talking it. about the holes that exist, the God. gaping holes in fucking education, right. in uh, mental health and, uh, care. None of that matters. None it's of that pronouns. matters. You Wait, respect it's all Zim. about Zim Zazer. I never I'm, heard I'm this. I'm an or. Either or. You're an or? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? I'm either or. I'm so do I call you? Do I say, this is my friend Push, <laughs> or <laughs> is, uh, is really looking for Thank a you. resort weekend that or and I can do together. <laughs> Bay. Thank you. I'm a plural. Very respectful. You think I, I knocked it out of the park, right? Shit, that takes a lot of thinking. I know. Everything I don't know if does. I'm that smart. What's that? Is that from Africa? That's from Puerto Rico. That's pretty dope. I'm I gotta pretty pee sure. really bad. And I gotta go. I got a guy coming to my house to build a table for me. What kind of table? Listen to what I did. Tell me. 
you know how you're like, I don't believe in myself and that's your deal right now? Yeah. You know what my deal is? What? Bad self-care. I did not fucking realize this because my our parents don't take good care of us. For instance, I've been getting out of the shower for 42 years. I take a towel and I vaguely towel off and then I put my clothes on wet. Why? Because I'm fucking crazy. I'm, I don't know. For That's years, miserable. It's misery. And every time, and I'd be putting on like, like Pilates leggings and shit. No. And like, oh, fuck. And I just get angry. I finally had the epiphany. I need to start drying myself off more. And now I start, dry, I, it's nice. <laughs> and then I start drinking smoothies. For three years, I've been drinking these smoothies. Spinach, spinach, uh, cucumber, avocado, water and i blend it up and i drink i go this is disgusting it tastes warm this is terrible three years i hate it i drink it my trainer goes well why don't you put some ice in it I go, <laughs> revolutionary fucking kidding me bro and so i now i put ice and i'm not drinking hot smoothies anymore that's right, a right, new fucking right, thing right. for me anyways i realized because we are the way our house is designed the master bedrooms on one floor on the top and everyone else is on the bottom so if I wake up in the morning and I go down to get my coffee, I'm already thrown into madness. The baby's yeah. crying. The dog shit the rug. Yeah. I'm cleaning up dog shit. I'm changing diapers. I'm in it. Yep. I saw in someone else's house, they put a coffee machine in their bathroom. Ah. Only took me years to realize, like, I should put a coffee machine in my own bathroom. So when I wake up, I have my coffee. I decompress. Yeah. And then when I'm fully caffeinated and ready, I'm going to go down and deal with the dogs and the babies and the thing and the da 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 Right, right, So I'm right. going to have a guy build me a coffee station. It's just some Amazon. Put it together. And now I have my coffee. Nice. I take care of myself. That's excellent self-care. self-care. Thank you. I'm glad you started drying off completely. I know. That's, that's troublesome. <laughs> that's worrisome. That's troublesome. I do so many things that I'm just now noticing. Like what else? This so there, is fascinating. Yeah, I'm so I'm so crazy. So there's um, okay. I I uh, I sneak away. We have the, our studio, mm-hmm. which we used to use. Now it's just a, a quiet room, mm-hmm. and I sneak in there and I take naps on this really hard couch, really hard. And I'm always like, God, this is so uncomfortable. Like I like like a year, I've been sneaking in and like, I go go. I could probably get like a softer couch, right? So now I I got a softer thing to sleep on like i just don't notice these things right and then i go yeah i should probably do something nicer that'd be nicer wouldn't it (laughs) i do stuff like that too though i've been using this same damn can opener this can opener opens uh, like a half inch of the can and then the rest of it i just fight with it fight with it i did the same thing and then this week i went you know, Leanne, you could buy a new can opener. Right? Uh-huh. It's not like you can't afford a can opener. The can opener is 108 years old. Uh-huh. It's rusted. And I did that too. And the same with my stupid, like, uh, pepper grinder. I've been using this pepper grinder going, nothing's coming out. Nothing's coming but, out. But you don't replace it, right? But you don't replace just it. it, back, do it again. I wonder if that's part of how we grew up. It is. You know, you just don't spend a single nickel. You it sit is. like a squirrel. Yeah. And well, here's the thing. You could buy a new can opener. And then this nice person can deliver it to your front door. Right. In like 24 hours. That's right. how amazing the world is. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're investing more in self-care. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I you know. so much for thanks, coming. Thanks for having me. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. I miss you so much. I miss you too. And you're going to, I'm not going to unveil the new project, but you're a part of something that I am unveiling so very excited. shortly and it's going to be dope. It's going to be awesome. I hope I come back soon. I love you. Please come back soon and come back even not for this. No, I know. Come to back to have like some people. wine and just hang out. For sure. Okay. Love okay. you. I love you. Yeah.